素晴らしい What is up, everybody? What does the sound sound like? I'm hoping I am not deafening anybody. Because a uh, new computer, new settings, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure I actually set up the microphone correctly. So let me know what it sounds like. Sounds good, thank God. Okay, no one's deaf. I have had the worst, well, not the worst, I mean, first world problems, but I've, I've had a really bad uh, 48 hours. It's not been a good time, but we're, it's, it's done. I think everything is fine now. Basically, just fuck, right? The, the, setting up this new computer has kind of been the worst thing for a very dumb reason that it took a lot of very talented people it took a long time to figure out why, even though it was a very simple problem. So, quick recap before we get into the F code news. Like, uh, my graphics card on my old computer was just getting kind of old, right? So I was like, you know, I should probably replace it. It's just you know, wear and tear is getting to it. So I go to replace my my graphics card. I get a newer one. I try to put it in my new computer, and it's just not working. Whenever I, I would install it, uh, it, it just, I could not update its drivers for it to like work properly. It would always say this version of Windows is incompatible. Uh, you'd look up, you know, reasons that could happen, and none of the fixes would do anything. Make sure my Windows was as updated as it could be, still wouldn't work. Um, that can sometimes happen when you switch out components. So I was like, fuck it, gotta build a brand new computer from scratch with this graphics card to do that. And same fucking problem. Uh, ooh, when you set up the motherboard, all this stuff, and then it just, uh, we go to, this one would at least recognize the graphics card, but when you try to update it in any way, it just wouldn't. Um, so, and I tried every goddamn thing I could think of, uh, and my brother, who's really good with, uh, he, he builds computers, and he's really good at that stuff, he couldn't figure it out. Uh, so I contacted NVIDIA, and then they ran through stuff, and, uh, they eventually like, okay, even though your Windows is updated as it can be, like, the version of Windows is probably messed up. And you probably need a newer version of Windows 10. Um, and so you can contact Microsoft and see, you know, what to do there. So I do that. They do all this stuff to make sure it's, uh, like, try to install the newest version instead of, like, just update, but an extra Windows version. And, um, it can't. It, like, won't. It's like, it would go through the process of trying to, to get a, a newer version, and then it would just be like, fail, and it would, wouldn't explain why. Uh, and so they kept like, running me through all this bullshit to, to try to get it to work. Uh, and eventually, basically, the version of Windows I had from like the flash drive, right, that just installed Windows 10, was just so old, it could not update to the newest, like the, the version of Windows you actually needed to be compatible with the graphics card drivers. So I basically had to like try to install, the person did to fix it was they had me try to install some old as dirt like Microsoft app that's like abandonware, but that version, that, that, that app, like it, it wouldn't work with, with the version of Windows I had and it would prompt you to try to install a version of Windows that was newer at the time. It's not new now, but it was newer at the time. And that version was in like, you know, striking distance of like the actual update that I needed. 
And so I did that, and then it could actually update for real, and then I could update the drivers, and now everything works! You know, it was like fucking 4 a.m. by the time... Like, just a, such a dumb problem. Anyway, it works now, so that's enough of that. Uh, I have not really done the event yet because uh, of that, what I was just talking about, and then I've been... Probably not going to stream a lot today because I slept so poorly that I uh, am barely coherent and it is incredibly difficult for me to read anything because I can't focus very well, so uh, probably not going to be a super long stream today, but we'll see how we do. But yeah, it's fixed now. Moral of the story, don't install Windows from a really old version. It's not good. So, they buffed Nero Bride. I don't know why. They did not buff anyone else. And as far as I'm aware, no one got an animation update. So, that's pretty lame. Nero Bride's buff, I believe, is bonus damage versus Sky, which is generally things with Divinity. You just played this song game! You just. Anyway. Uh, she. Her heal now gives bonus damage to Sky targets. Uh, I don't know about how much, I haven't looked at the numbers. I'm guessing 50% for three turns or something ridiculous like that, but, uh... Kind of a niche buff, but Divinity is so common, it's a- it's a, a 30? Okay, that's not- it's still a lot, but... So here's the thing, people have this idea that Nero Bride is not that good, or, or is like outdated or something. It's, this has always been a thing, before she got her first buff, people thought she was like outdated and stuff. And then she got buffed and she got the targeted battery and I was like, oh, she's pretty good now. But the, I think a lot of people still thought she was like power creeps. Because for some reason, everyone has always thought from the beginning of her, like, existence, everyone has always thought Nero Bride is a support. Just a support. And that's it. And then she's not, you know, she's no Castor or Toria, right? Although you can use her with Castor or Toria. Anyway, and so people are always wanting her support stuff to be buffed, and they keep buffing that, and now she's just nonsense. The thing is, she is, and always has been, a stupidly good DPS that has the option to be a support. If you're fighting a Lancer or a Berserker, she will absolutely destroy them. She's one of the best, if not the best, single target saber in the game. All those support skills she can just put on herself. And she gives herself a giant attack up, giant defense up, big heal, big NP gain, has a art NP, kind of okay hit count, with a really good overcharge that lasts a long time, so the longer the fight goes, she's, her, her damage ramps up. She doesn't like wind down and run out of gas, she just keeps going. One of the best DPS looping units, and she always has been. Always, right? Because she's gonna wanna work with someone like Castoria or, or Tam or whatever, but built in, she has her own NP gain skill. Right? So if she's working with those typical loop servants, or even just waver, she can MP over and over and over and over and over so easy. And it, she's actually a god tier solo unit. She's weak against certain things, like some things have... Um... Like the, the MP spam, right? Or do like, you know, 10,000 damage every turn because she has no hard survival. She's weak against that stuff. But if that's not a problem, I mean, she just destroys things. And then as a bonus, she can also be used as a support and give all those buffs to somebody else. So when she's already filling the DPS slot, you basically have an extra support slot, right? Normally you'd have, one, you know, one DPS, five supports when you're trying to do loopy bullshit. But in her case, you basically have one DPS and six supports. It's broken as fuck. And yeah, now she's even better. And she can give herself now a niche against divinity people and murder them even harder. Or give it to somebody else, right? You can have someone else be looping. You can use... Uh, Galatea, who they just added here, and have double Castoria switch in Nero Bride and now give her the, all the extra NP gain, attack up, and uh, etc. etc. Like, really broken. Like, Nero Bride is disgusting. I think she overall probably is the best single target uh, saber just because her damage output is nonsense. It's so easy. It's a, such so, She can sustain it for so long, and then as a bonus, she's going to be a support. Okay, I gotta log on my main here. I got my phone up. I gotta... We're doing the 1-3 to three star gimmick, I forgot, so I gotta... Stay in line here. 
to make a support list here specifically for three stars. Wait, you don't get support though in this. Aside from the the story stages, so I just have to slot a few things to get us by the story stuff, and then uh, that's that. Let me just slap whatever up here. We'll go. We'll go Ushi because this stage should be a joke anyway, and then Ushi is disgusting. I would put up Ku, but he's level 100, so... Like, I'm gonna be cheeky and I'm gonna- I'm gonna slot the event CE. It's a three-star. It's a three-star CE, so technically within the rules. Okay. And I actually haven't used Galatea much. I haven't had time. I haven't really played anything or looked into anything. I've been so busy with shit. I just logged in. Where, uh... Oh. I have the wrong support list up. But, uh, I mean, she's alright. She seems like Vlad, but way better. And I mean, way better. And, uh, like, design-wise, she's not my cup of tea, but I don't mind it. If you're gonna do a, a mech... That's one of the better things in history to base it on, so it actually works just fine, doesn't really bother me. Okay, it's one to three star nonsense here. Stars for days. Man, this is gonna be a rough stream. It's so hard for me to read chat. Like, I can't concentrate at all. I can really only concentrate on one thing at a time at best. Is this the wrong account? I think this is, this must be the wrong account. Hold on. I think I'm on the, I must be on the newbie account. Let me, hold on. Because, yeah, if this was the one to three star account, we would have, uh, Way more leveled CEs than that. Yeah, this is this is the Achilles account. Look, man, it's hard enough to concentrate on gameplay, streaming, you know, music, commentary, anyway, than when you don't sleep. Uh, it's even worse. Hey, Red. Yeah, this is not going to be my most alert stream by any means, but I wanted to make sure I could stream and everything was working properly and, and set up right. Okay, my window size is probably off on this one that I see here. Yeah, I figured. Okay, now we're on the right account. Now we get to listen to the fucking intro again. So chat, how do you all like, what's her name, Galatea? Is the, her react, what I've seen is most people like her, but she doesn't have that much hype behind her. Some people really don't like her design, but I'm like, she's, she's based on a goddamn statue. So, I, I think it's kind of like, uh, what one would expect if you're going to anime a statue, so, kind of, it, it works, I think it's reasonable, but it's, like you said, not really my cup of tea. Giant pants, indeed. I think she's alright. Just nothing, I, I think she would have made a better four star, I feel. I think people would have been a lot more okay with it if she was a four star. I, 
what really disappoints me is not her like design being kind of kind of simple because again she's based on a fucking statue it kind of should be simple like it, i think it works in that department i just wish they had more variety what i would have done was i would have done the stage one you know have clothes or whatever stage two pretty much do what they did and then stage three they should have gone way more ham on the mech thing because then you you have the variety right like if there ever was a time they could get away with mecha like merle nonsense this is it, right? Your your base, your head. It's a statue coming to life, right? And in the Greek stuff, they always use mech stuff anyway, so that would have worked really well. So I would have made you know stage one, you know more normal clothes or 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 ham it up with the silly scaffolding, you know clothing, you know uh, painting pants and all that, which they did. But do that for stage one, and then stage two, pretty much have what they have, you know, pretty simplistic, you know. It's a statue. Um, and, and in stage three, go super ham on the mech, right? Then you have, I think that, you have variety at that point, right? That would have been the better way to do it. Unfortunately, that takes effort, and, uh, so we didn't get that. Because am I the only one that saw her stage three, and I was like, really? Like, barely anything changed. Oh, God, I feel like my account settings have, might have changed. <laughs> because, new computer, I wonder if, uh... I don't think that's the stage I have Ushi in, is it? Don't I have her in final? I feel like it's set to random now. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think this the uh, setting is right here. We'll see. Maybe I'm just not remembering. Yeah, it is a little zoomed in. Hold on. Right there. And there we go. That's better. Oh god, streaming today was a mistake. I thought it would be. It is really hard to concentrate, man. really sucks because like three days ago I had lots of problems with my sleep apnea and I got like no sleep and I felt really bad and then I was just starting to kind of get back on the horse and then all this happened so <sighs> not not the happiest camper I don't know why I'm putting effort into this team setup because I suspect this stage is going to be a giant nothing burger I should get Angra Bond on this account. That's actually a useful, practical thing for this account to do. Alright. Let me see if FFZ is working now. So I didn't have that set up. I, set, I, think, I think I set it up properly during the pre-stream part there. Um, I may not have gotten it in time. No, it's still not working. I don't know why it's not working. It should be, but it's not. Funnily enough, though, because it's set up on OBS, on, like, the preview and stuff on OBS, it does show the emotes, but in chat, I'm not actually seeing it. Might just be on my end where I can't see it, but, uh, I swear I did everything right, though, and it should be working even for me, so I don't know why it's not. Yeah, I hadn't looked into the artist for Galatea, Galatea, whatever. It's a fucking statue. I don't know. It, that's a weird thing to base it on. I guess they did it because a lot of people kind of idolized the statue, you know, waifu factor even back then, like in real life. So I guess that's what they're... Oh god, yeah, it definitely reset all my settings. That's why my Ascension stage isn't right. Oh! I'll just, uh, off-stream, I'll just compare it to my phone, like my main account setting, and just go with that. 
So, the three-star CE in this event is obviously good for the event because it gives you a 30% damage bonus and then, um, if it's limit broken, it's 60%. But it's actually an okay three-star CE. It's not, like, amazing. I think you'll probably normally use Black Key over it or you can use Ryoto Temple or uh, Ley Line over it. But it gives 5% Buster Up and then 20% starting in P, and starting in P is just such a rare thing for low star CEs, you're so starved of it. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't give that much damage up, and it doesn't give that much starting in P, so you're probably gonna go with just Ley Line. Like, you'd probably rather just get that first MP way faster than have 5% Buster up, right? Like, literally, you're trading 30% starting in P for 5% Buster up. Now, there are times where starting in P is not that important, or you just need, you just gotta have that, you know, slightly higher amount of damage or whatever. But, uh, it's okay, but it's not amazing. They have definitely not run out of ideas. Because, I mean, there's so many things that they've alluded to but not added. Uh, there's so many major things in history and legend and stuff that they haven't touched yet. We don't even have normal Hercules, for God's sakes. Uh, you have all these lost belt servants they're just sitting on. I think they just thought, hey, wouldn't this be funny? Because, uh, it's kind of like real waifu in history, lol. Because, you know, where it's set, that's obviously what they're, you know, focusing on. So. Whole, uh, otaku culture or whatever. For God's sakes, we're still missing most of the Knights of the Round. We still don't have any of the Paladins of Charlemagne other than, you know, well, actually, we have two. I was about to say Trap Face, but we've got, uh, Booty Lance and two. But, you know, hell, we don't even have Charlemagne, for God's sake, so... I don't, I don't think they're out of ideas in the slightest. I do think they're out of ideas, though, for Japanese servants, for the most part. There's a few things, and there's definitely a few things that they could still do. Um... But yeah, I think they're definitely scraping the bottom of the barrel at this point. I, I, with the exception of a few things, they're kind of like intentionally saving or well, not using. You, uh, for that, you know, they keep having to come up with some pretty random Japanese uh, servants at this point. It, it's like they should have paced themselves better. Imagine that, chat. Imagine just not adding a billion fucking Japanese servants. When like, you know, because you had Fate Stay Night, didn't have that many Japanese servants in it. Uh, at one, actually. Uh, you had, you know, Fate Apoc, same deal, Fate Zero, I don't think it had any Japanese servants in it, uh, you know, Fate Extra. They really did not do a lot of Japanese servants in the, the early stuff, you know, they didn't do a lot of any specific thing, really. I guess Greek would be the one thing that they did a fair amount of, but I think Greek stuff is still you know, widespread around the globe. But then FGO happened and, you know, Man Money, so they just started pumping out Japanese servants at a, at a really disproportionate ratio to every other culture and and you know religion and mythos and so on and so forth, and so they've, they've kind of like burned themselves out and they're not, they don't have that much stuff left. They should have like, you know, if they had this many Japanese servants, you know, like uh, down the road, like eventually they got to this point. I think that'd have been fine, but they got to that point so quickly it was kind of dumb. Or meanwhile, we have a bunch of like regions that don't have a single character. It's like what. Fucking foreigner servants, dude. This intro is pretty long. Normally, they get you to tower climbing pretty quick. And I don't, I don't only did the one stage. I just mean like, look at how many arrows are in this. It looks like some of them are nothing burgers. All these Nobus, and they never buffed the original one. I would show off Galatea, but um, trying to stay within the, the boundaries here. Okay, I should probably slot something different because that is not a three-star CE. Mm. Do the good old ley line. I wish we could get a Henry V, man. He's England's most famous king, and he's got such a, an, a, 
such an insane life. Like, such an insane life. I do wonder how this account will fare when we get to climbing. He might add Goliath at some point. I kind of feel like the, there's a lot of like basic stuff like that. That's so an obvious thing to add, but they don't have any story justification to do it. And I think they think it's a waste to just throw them in out of nowhere. So I feel like they'd save it for whenever they come up with a new batch of singularities, right? Because the singularities we have right now are Lost Belts. They, they planned like two years ago or three years ago, right? They already knew what they were and what the main characters for them were going to be and what their themes were going to be. So if a lot of these like generic things don't fit into those, a lot of them I think they're just going to save or if they ever, you know, like, oh, hey, we're going to do a new batch of singularities. Oh, hey, it might be set in this area. So let's do these obvious picks now, right? So some stuff I think they're just saving, and then some stuff I guess they just don't care about because they're too busy adding, uh, you know, weave nonsense. And Henry VIII might be more famous. I don't know though. It's Easy. Henry V is pretty uh, goddamn famous because he's pretty much what gave them their independence, really. Like how they became their own independent nation, kingdom compared to France. And, you know, Hundred Years' War and all that good shit is a pretty famous period in history anyway. I don't think they're ever gonna add this, by the way. Not gonna happen. Way too much controversy on that one. And uh, they can kind of get away with it, you know. It'd be the second coming, lol, right? So I, I don't, I, I don't think they're gonna, they're gonna do it. They barely touch like anything from Christianity. They kind of keep it. Um, they don't do anything too on the nose, right? They're, they're, and I don't think they're going to. I think that's part of why we don't have Moses. Now they might add Moses because there's been so much demand for him, but. I have to remind everyone that Genghis Khan is just Genghis Khan. You know, R Romulus is just Romulus. He just he just happened in a circumstance to be summoned as a grand. It's, so there's Genghis Khan is just going to be a writer like anybody else, and the summonable version will be a writer like anyone else. Now maybe in the story, you know, he happens to fill the role of a grand writer temporarily, but you know, it's, that's not a other than Gramps, that's not a thing. And even Gramps, it's not like Gramps is the Grand Assassin, it's just there are no other candidates, so... I think they will do Genghis Khan at some point, but I, that's another just big-ass name that I think they're gonna save for when it makes sense. Although, who knows, it's either that, or they're gonna gender-bend them and slap them in some random, you know, event that is not even that important, but... My waifu, right? I think it's, it's one of those two things. I mean, basically everyone is everyone's ancestor, though. That's the thing. Okay, so we're actually climbing now. So where this account is going to really struggle, and I mean really... It, it'll beat the event, uh, but... It doesn't have a lot of, you know, servants. We don't level a lot of stuff, and we only level stuff that's one to three star. So, let me plan ahead a little bit. What's, like, the one servant I'm going to... I'm going to need a good, like, AOE servant for the wave 10 thing, I think. So, save a Lancer, and then there's, like, that Berserker AOE thing. So, save a AOE person. We have, like, no AOE on this account, though. I guess we save Fuma. We'll save Fuma for the AOE thing. Please tell me I've done his upgrades. I haven't. Fucking Christ, man. I don't even know why, because we've done Shimosa, haven't we? Fuck. Um, what's my other options? Uh, there's Chen Gong, but that don't really work. 
Uh, Antonio's garbage because he's no self survival for Berserkers. Okay, oh yeah, Babbage, Caster Coup, there we go, a BC Brawn. Of course, if the one thing we have AoE is, is Casters because they don't have single target. Probably save Caster Coup then. And then save. Uh, Coup, I guess, for the Archer stage. It's probably uh, overkill, but we'll, we'll do that. Okay, I think we've got a plan. Don't really need to counter class, but might as well, because you're not going to need archers that many times. Probably use a rush, to be honest, and then start winding the cooldown down. Or we use somebody solid. Yeah, we'll use Billy and then put him in the cooldown thing immediately. That makes sense. And then... Okay, chat, can we use gold for fodder or no? I'm, I'm get I think chat's going to want no. Uh, I guess we just keep everything 1 to 3 star here. Thankfully, there's plenty of 1 to 3 stars we never leveled. So, uh, we still have fodders. We definitely have less fodders, though. Okay, Chad doesn't seem to care if I kill- Okay, we'll try to keep it, like, proper stuff. But if we run out, right, but we still have active units to use, then we'll use the gold for fodder. Because it, it doesn't really affect anything. I don't think we ever leveled her. I should save extra Berserker though for like weird extra classes or something like her. For fodder, I mean. I'm just trying to make sure I don't bring something that I actually leveled. This is what I get for not sorting out my inventory. Obviously, when we're talking about, like, dream servants for them to add, you know, Green Knight is top of my list. But yeah, I'd say Green Knight, Henry V, Butch Cassidy. Out of those, I think Henry V is the only one we might actually get. I don't know if we will, though, because I think they think Henry V is just a, a Shakespeare play. So they're like, oh yeah, that's just a phantom for Shakespeare, like with Macbeth and everything. But that's not... How that works. Oh man, 55k. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna shoot him in the goddamn face. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, there's more jerk. More Norse, too. How do we not have more Norse stuff? I don't understand. I guess Norse must be way more niche in Japan. Than it is in North America because, uh, and, and sure, in North America, Norse is not as popular as Greek mythology and stuff like that, but it's still plenty popular. And uh, there's just fuck all Norse in uh, in Fate. Never mind F Go, just in Fate. And then um, there's not much from like uh, Egypt. Well, there's an OK amount from Egypt, but not that much. But like Arabia, stuff like that. Not a lot, really, not a lot. And not a lot from like the Persian Empire and that kind of thing either. So yeah, I mean, there, I mean, God, yeah, we don't have Aladdin, we don't have any of that stuff, uh, King Midas, right? Like, there's, there's still quite a lot of obvious stuff they haven't touched yet. <laughs> Midas could be really cool, right? There's, making an anime version of that with the whole golden touch and everything. That could be pretty interesting to see an anime take on that. I mean, there, there's definitely some, I talked about this last stream, I think, there's definitely something going on with Caster 2 and just Norse stuff. Like, I, I, I'm, a lot of people think, like, literally Odin is, like, inside of Caster 2, uh, and, like, he, or he just is Caster 2, that's what a lot of people think, is, is, is Caster 2 isn't 2, and he never has been, and it's just Odin. I don't think that's accurate, I think now there might be some nonsense, like, Odin is, like, hiding inside of uh you know caster Ku's saint graph I mean, like maybe later on in like lost belt six you'll use caster Ku as a catalyst to summon odin or, or something like that uh and they'll make some new version you know or whatever because there there there's a lot it, there's clearly something going on there's a lot of if you look through all this stuff with caster Ku, there's some weird shit going on uh and they've like related him to norse stuff a lot uh, and like Ziggard was even like, hmm, and like stuff like that. So I do think something's up. Uh, 
hard to say though what they're gonna do with it exactly i don't think they're just gonna have oh yeah by the way guys that three star caster that was actually odin this whole time i don't think they're gonna do that because that's not how you make money right but uh i, I know we've always known this you know they pretty much said oh yeah right lancer coup is weaker in f go than he is in normal fate right like a fate stay night or if he's just summoned out and wherever, he's normally stronger than what he is in FGO. And that was obviously them justifying him being a 3-star. But the way Scath talks about it, she doesn't actually say... A lot of people, like, assume, and what MASH even assumes, is that he's weaker because of Caster Coup and his, like, Saint Graph is split up. But that's not... As far as I'm aware, that's not what Scath says. She basically says something is just wrong with his Saint Graph and it's, like, missing half of it. And so... And they never really explained it. Now, they kind of were, like, had MASH be all oh, well, it's probably... Caster coup, but then they kind of put some doubt on, on that. So, uh, it, you know, something's probably just jacked with Ku's Saint Graph, and it's making Ku weaker than he normally is, and it'll probably result in a summoning Odin in some way. It's kind of dumb, though. Most of the the what the if this turns out to be true, now maybe it's all just you know smoke and mirrors, and it's not a real thing. But if it does turn out to be true, the connection I think they're trying to make between Ku and Odin is kind of dumb. Because there's some, like, really basic connections between Ku's dad and Odin. But they're pretty loose and silly. And most of the connections they're making with Ku are actually just connections Ku has with his dad. Not with Odin. So it's like, if he sh it, it would be... I would be down. This whole, like, theory would be really cool if it was gonna culminate in, like, summoning Loth. Right? And, like, Loth was, hi you know, hiding in Ku's St. Graf and... We eventually summoned him and all that. Because that would actually make a lot of sense, right? And they have a whole, a lot of, like, like father, like son that Ku is not even aware of. Like, he doesn't even realize that he's doing a lot of stuff really similar to his dad. Um, like, in the actual legends and stuff. Um, so that would have been really cool. But it's, you know, their loft's not popular enough. So if it is anything, it probably is Odin. And they have hinted at Odin, like, helping us behind the scenes. Uh, in Lost Vault 2 and stuff. And, like, I love Odin. Odin's awesome. Right? So, if we get Odin in FGO, I'm not going to complain. It's just, I would prefer Odin to be Odin and, and Ku to be Ku. They don't really have that much in common uh, outside of a really silly connection between, with, from his father, which I just don't... That's that's really pushing it, right? So, okay, we need to save a caster. There's no way we're going to need Asclepius anytime soon. Boys, it's DPS Asclepius time. Bust out the blue-black key here. Let's fucking go. Oh yeah, I gotta bring more fodder. That's the uh, that's the hard part. Rip proto coup, reduced uh, fodder. We never actually leveled them over here. But yeah, as I've looked into it, it's undeniable that there's something bizarre is going on with Caster Coup. There's certainly something up. Uh, my guess is, you know, Caster Coup is actually weaker than he's supposed to be. But he has like some extra connections to Odin, like that he's normally wouldn't, and then it'll probably culminate in some kind of Odin shenanigans later. But like his, I, I would presume, uh, Caster Ku Saint Graph is also messed up, like regular Ku's is, and that's where they're gonna explain all this. They've always connected though. I, I, it's never mind Loth and and all that. They've always, I don't know why, but they've always connected Norse mythology and, and Celtic and Irish specifically. I, I don't know why, but they've always done this. I mean, like, because they've got, you know, Scath equals Scatty, and uh, they, they had it so all, this is not a real life thing, this is a fate thing. All rune magic goes back to Odin. Odin created rune, rune magecraft, um, and he made the original runes that are like the strongest and for some reason you know scat got them like the top tier line you know direct descendant of them i don't know why but she did right and the um and that's also why valkyries have have uh runes and all that um so they kind of always had this connection between uh irish uh or celtic in general and uh, Norse. I, I, I don't know why. It's kind of dumb. But, uh... Because the thing is, Norse isn't ultimately... It's not really European. It, I mean, it kind of is. And obviously, they, you know, kind of fused with Europe. But their history and their mythos is not really connected to, like, the mainland of, of Europe. Right? They, they have, you know, that 
and I mean, it kind of, you know, it's still kind of Europe, but they were so isolated and disconnected from that uh, aspect of the world for quite a long time. Uh, it, do it doesn't really make any sense. They don't really, they, 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 eventually they influence each other to a degree, I suppose, because eventually all cultures came together, but, uh, but, you know, the Danes, because that's where it comes from, you know, is the Danes, and the Danes, you know, kind of invaded Europe and got absorbed by Europe eventually, but they're, that's not where their roots really are, if that makes any sense. I mean, I guess geography-wise, you can kind of, kind of depends on how you want to do the map, but... I, I, if you, my thing is, like, when you think Europe and you think, look, you got, you know, France, Germany, uh, Hungary, you know, England, and then the, the Celtic regions and stuff, and how those have influenced each other. It, it's pretty different from how all the North stuff got in there, so. Yeah, not, not Hungary, what am I thinking of? Um, well, speaking of Hungary, though, we need more, there's literally none of that in Faith, and we could use some, like, uh, I had someone in Discord share me some some stuff from there with like uh, the Black Army and everything, and that that would be pretty awesome if they put some of that in there. But yeah, I don't I don't get Celtic and Norse being mixed, but that's very much a thing in Fate for some fucking reason. But hey, if we get Odin, I'll be happy. But if it's Odin, and it's but it's like it's actually Koo. I don't. Like, I think a lot of I, I this is I see this happening, right? Like if they added like a five star version of Koo that Koo equals Odin, everyone's gonna be like, oh, I bet your green's happy, but not really, right? I I'd rather have like, you know, normal proper Berserker Koo or Saber Koo or Rider Koo or something, right? And, and then have you know, Odin, like how we have Quetz and, and stuff, like just possessing some whatever body that happens to be in line with them, right? I'm not, I'm not really big on the whole, you know, taking established things and fusing them with some other established thing. I don't, I don't really care for that. It's not my uh, cup of tea. I don't hate for pseudo servants, it just pretends. Uh, uh, it depends on how they do it. Like, uh, I, I said, pret I was saying pretend. I'm so tired, dude. I, my brain is. Dude, you have no idea. I, like, I'll try to type hello and I'll type help, right? Or, or some shit like that, right? Like, or, or actually, it was the other way around. I, I went to type, uh, like, help and I stepped hello instead or some shit. But, like, there's just. My brain is so fucked right now with how little sleep uh, I got. A lot of weird things getting mixed up there right now. Not size help, but I mean help. Like, if I'll be thinking about one thing, like, a, a few minutes ago, and I start, like, you know, going in another direction, and then I go to, like, actually talk to someone or, or, you know, type in a search in Google or whatever, that thing I was thinking of a few minutes before that will, like, fuse with it, right? And it, like, influences it. It's, uh... That happens a lot when I'm tired, I've noticed. Trying to stop this guy from impeeing me in the face. <laughs> Trying to send him a message. <laughs> We're probably never getting a proper saber version of Sue now, though, because they're just gonna have, you know, uh, the arcade version. Like, and maybe that makes it into Efco at some point, but they're not gonna do, like, an adult version. But um, I guess that's fine if they wanted to do another adult version. You know, Warp Spasm would be the obvious thing to do. You know, it's definitely one of the more famous things. Uh, about Koo, and uh, they brought it up so many times, so it's like, yeah, it'd be nice if we just get that. Oh god, I should've done Buster. Might've, yeah, we could've killed there if I didn't Buster quick quick. Or Buster Art Art. It's fine, he did like no damage. 
Yeah, I'm combo. I'm gonna be right back. I need to get water. I've seen like five or six people over the years, like on our Discord, that have always wanted Brazilian stuff. NFGO, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't know that much about Brazilian history at all, so, uh, yeah, I don't know if that'd be good or not, but yeah, I've definitely seen people, uh, say that here and there. And I know that, though, is not NFGO, they don't really have anything. They focus a lot on Europe, Asia, and, um... Like, you know, then ancient uh, civilizations, I suppose, but that, that's mostly what they do. Yeah, they have a lot of, a lot of Japan and China. No Korea, literally no Korea. India is technically part of Asia. Most people don't see it that way. I think most people now kind of see Asia as like just Korea, Japan, China, Vietnam, maybe. And Taiwan. That's, that's how most people see it. But technically, India is part of Asia. And Thailand. Wait, no. Let's not. Wait. We'll save him for the, the floor 10. Hopefully I don't need another Lancer. Well, we have Quetz. That's about it. Sorry, Jason. Look at this one, one, one. Yeah, I guess Taiga. That's kind of true. It, really, though, Taiga is more Taiga than anything. She's Taiga, but wackier. Like, like even more wacky. But it's mostly Taiga. Like, technically... Oh, well, I had to go AFK for a second there, I had to turn my heater off, god damn. <clears throat> anyway... Well, it's not really Mexico, though, it's kind of, you know, the ancient world, but... You could kind of say it's North America. I think most people would associate, though, like that region uh, as more South American-esque. But yeah, they don't really do much with uh, anything really from the South American continent, so. I figure they will at some point. I mean, we, Lost Belt 7, right, should do something. <laughs> like geographically it's one thing but then you know um like culturally you know, people would say it more connected to that kind of thing because um i hope i don't have to explain this but quetz is not from like modern mexico that is uh not how that works I'm fine with modern characters when they fit the bill. They already had modern characters, so if, you, if, that, if you've got them, it's not wrong to have more. If they fit the bill, it's fine. 
You know, we got Billy the Kid, so it's like Red Baron would be fine, things like that. But I guess it depends on how modern, right? And if it's super modern, then you have to be like respectful for like living relatives and stuff. So a lot of times it's not a good idea if it's like super recent. We don't need Steve Jobs in FGO, okay? That's, that's what I'm getting at here. But yeah, we you know we've got Tesla, we've got Billy the Kid, uh, you know, Moriarty and Sherlock, although not real or more modern, I suppose. Oh, you know, Abigail. Yeah, if they're famous enough. Sure, why not? How it's always been, though, and this is fair enough, is, um... It's harder to become a legend in the modern era, and it's true, it is. But it still happens. I don't think Einstein would be controversial at all, to be honest. Einstein is pretty widely loved. Um, it's not like he was happy about the atomic bomb. I mean, he's way more popular, honestly, for the E equals MC square anyway. The, the only issue would be, I, I have no idea if he's living relatives or not, not a clue. And uh, you know, he, that, 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 that could be an issue. And I mean, fair enough, if, if they're not for it, then fuck it. But I really think with more modern stuff, you definitely need to do a better job of being respectful to the source material, right? Wait, what stage is this? You get like bonus stages every once in a while, and those I gotta do with an AoE person. Or the first one that comes up anyway. I've done the first like few floors on my main account. I think I did like 15 or something. Ah, uh, dude, Berserker versus Berserker. I mean, if Hysterios can handle it, might as well. I forgot to put somebody in the cooldown reduction thing. Let me do that. Mmm. Billy makes sense. Yeah, Red Baron would be a good one, and he's actually a pretty interesting person in, uh, in life. He kind of started off as the young, cocky, you know, seeing war as a sport kind of person, and then he definitely uh, got, uh, in, uh, how do you put it, worn out with it. And he still had quite the accomplishments, though, so... Yeah, Nero Bride, I, I, it's because they want her to be a better support, I guess. And she is popular, so. We may get Van Gogh, but I think you would need them. To, well, I don't think they intended in putting him in F Go, but because there's been a decent amount of outcry for it, maybe it does happen eventually. But he's popular enough, as like, never mind in Fate, I just mean like as a figure in history that it you know whenever a writer makes another book they might just want to use van gogh he's popular enough that that could happen and if another writer revisits the concept they probably would use a regular van gogh so it, it's possible I, I doubt it's going to happen anytime soon though oh my god i jesus this stage when i did it on my main account I picked Phantom of the Opera 
So, okay, I had, this was with the team, I had a level one Kuritsugu with um, Poster Girl, which was actually a mistake, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. Then I had level 65 Phantom of the Opera, and then I had a level 21 Ruler Quetz with Outrage. And I sort of switched those CEs because obviously Quetz, because she's level 20, could live longer, so she could have used the longer taunt. Uh, opposed to Outrage. And Phantom died. On turn one, they killed Kuritsugu. Uh, and then turn two, Outrage was gone, so Quetz didn't have Taunt anymore. And the Chimera crit uh, Phantom of the Opera for 6.5k. And then he died next turn. But I still won, because level 20 Quetz beat it. She, uh, yeah, she got her NP. I don't know how, but she got her NP. Uh, art change, I guess, on the way. And I gave her the, you know, Mystic Code buff and all that, and she killed it all with her NP at level 20. Or 21. And, uh, fucking 65 Phantom died. I, I wish Rex would have could have seen that. He would have, uh, been happy. But yeah, fucking, uh, Phantom of the Opera, man. So good. Hi, hi. Hey, Not only did Phantom die, but he didn't even kill a single mob. Like, he didn't even kill a golem. He did get the Chimera though, like, kinda low, like, so I, I could, I basically, I, I hit this one with a Buster card, and then impede, and then hit this one with a Buster card, and they were all dead. And this, cause he was, the Chimera was low enough that he would just die to, you know, get breathed on. Hey, at least Phantom has got the buff removal now, but that's only useful in specific circumstances, so. So one of the things I'm happiest about with this new computer, though, is I have got a much larger hard drive. So I, it is easier for me to now install other games and stuff if we want to, like, fuck around and have more bonus streams and, you know, shenanigans. So hopefully that'll, uh, that'll be a thing. That they... The sad part is, uh, I'm so into Darkest Dungeon, anytime we do a bonus stream, I'm gonna wanna play that for the foreseeable future. Obviously not forever, but I'm super loving Darkest Dungeon. Okay, my god, did we not accomplish anything at the start there? Come on, a Stereos animation update. I tell you, this account is gonna—it's gonna get weird when we get down to only a few units left because it is a pretty, you know, weak account. Really, game? If they didn't kill him right there, we were gonna win because I'd obviously evade next turn and the, the fucking double crit. I gotta try it again. I, I'm not gonna switch the unit. We're gonna keep Asterios. So we're beating this. Fucking Christ. Feels dead, man. Yep. Asterios probably doesn't have max foes in this account, I'm not sure though. Yumi no Harimo Jojo. Dewa Krauto Sruga. Okay. Good opening hand. I know, dude, Asterios in the maze of it would have been amazing because he's so in contrast. Then they only attack Asterios. But he's in such contrast. You know, that, that event is full of thoughts and shit, right? Uh, their one bit of contrast is, is Sitting Master, right? That's like the, the, but then they did that on purpose, which is fine. But that would have been awesome to have Asterios running around like a fucking maniac, just, you know, bonking everything and, and bulldozing the maze and and then have his NP do a big thing or something. That would've been awesome, but uh, nope. It's weird too, because Asterios, at least in NA, I'm not sure for like the Japanese player base, but in NA, Asterios is pretty popular for uh, low star. He's not like, you know, he's no coup or anything, but he's pretty popular, he's, he's liked. See you, Red. So them only attacking Asterios in that turn, I'm not happy about, because moves the deck didn't shuffle, so. This is not going well. I'm 
gonna try to see if I get lucky here and just kill the Chimera. It's not gonna happen. Oh, actually, that'd crit maybe. Really? So the smart way to approach this is I should use a sur any servant that has a survivability skill, right? Just a survivability skill will make this way easier. But I know Asterios can do it as long as the taunt walls die before him, which is overwhelmingly likely. They all take the same damage because the enemies are berserkers. They have 1,700 and 1,900 health. Asterios has almost 7,000, and he has the defense up, and I'm using the heal on him. Right, like I'm, a I'm actually trying to protect him, where I'm obviously not trying to protect the- I could bring taunts, but I, I, I want to save my taunts for, uh, you know, things that are harder. Whose strongest competition is Lee? What? Are you talking about Kama? Because I actually don't think her strongest competition is Lee at all. Uh, Lee is a very good assassin. But I think Kama's strongest competition, and it's crazy to me that no one sees this, is Jack. Everyone acts like Jack is this really out of date servant. Meanwhile, she has shredded basically every challenge quest, challenge quest she's even remotely applicable for. Like, Jack is so ridiculous, right? I, I've tested this quite a lot recently. It's not, eh, I don't know. It's true. She's literally soloed so much shit, and she's like one of the easiest servants to support ever. She just, she has such a dumb hit count in MP game, right? Her, her toolkit is somewhat vanilla, although it does have buff removal, which is not vanilla. But her synergy with like, just, you know, you summon a friend, Scatty, and then now she's just in ping like a fucking blender all, non-stop all the time. And then why she's doing that, she's critting all of the time. Like literally, she can basically MP, MP non-stop, she can crit non-stop, she has fucking buff removal, which is massive, she has hard survival, she had some soft survival, and then if, th this is, I'm completely ignoring her giant niche. Yeah, oh yeah, and then when she's fighting 50% of the game, she hits like a goddamn truck, way harder than Kama, right? It's not even close. Now, Kama's great. Kama is top tier, a completely top tier assassin, right? But so is Jack. It is, uh, yeah, and Crit Down. Crit Down is super applicable for challenge quests. Super. Like, Jack is godly. She completely keeps up with current content. And people keep saying that's not true, and yet she keeps blundering everything. There are so many Jack three-turn clears of hard content. There's a bunch of Jack solos of hard content. Like, there's no world where Jack is not a top-tier assassin. It's like, wow, imagine him peeing almost every turn and critting every turn and, and having hard survival and buff removal and people acting like that's not top-tier, right? Absolutely nonsense, and that's what the never mind the female thing, right? And then when they're female, she just is so far ahead of the pack. Again, though, Kama's great because Kama has massive survivability. You know, she can give the team survivability with the charm. Uh, you know, she's you know can, got the everlasting guts, and when it finally goes off, you cast it again, right? You can get your uh, MP rather easily. You know, Kama is totally fine, but there's no world where she's just blowing Jack out of the water. A lot of times, Jack is better than her. Now, there are times Kama's better than Jack, sure, but the difference normally the difference between them, one way or the other, is not that big. And sometimes it favors Jack, especially when the boss is female, and it, it very much favors Jack, unless you need charm a lot, right? Uh, like, if all you need is damage, 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 uh, and generally Jack is the way to go. Uh, but sometimes you're gonna have enough damage, and you don't need the bonus damage, and you just want, like, more, you know, survivability for the team, or, or whatever. Uh, but honestly, for a lot of, like, OP setups and stuff, combo stuff is kind of unnecessary, so, but that can be true for Jack too sometimes. But they're both great. I mean, they're both great. Lee's really good, too. Uh, Lee's totally fine. Also, just a lot, a lot of fucking damage. Uh, I think Jack is better than Lee in a lot of situations, though. Uh, just because uh, Jack does loop easier, and she makes stars easier, and that kind of thing. But, uh, and buff removal. Buff removal is so good. There are so many challenge quests that you can just totally just make so much easier because of buff removal. People act like buff removal is not good. because like, oh, the gimmicks are always unremovable. It's not about the gimmicks. First off, there's a lot of gimmicks that aren't unremovable. A lot of times, like, oh, you broke the health bar and I get a free invulnerability, but you can remove it. That's that's very common. Uh, and and the boss's normal skills are removable, and a lot of times the boss's normal skills are really obnoxious. Uh, it's normally, like, just the hard, set-in-stone gimmicks you can't remove, but the fights aren't designed for you to remove those anyway, so, like, that doesn't really matter. 
And Gramps is good too. Uh, I, I, Gramps is totally fine. Gramps is kind of reliant on having a higher MP rank. Um, but Gramps does have a lot of survivability. Now, I, ha I, have, I have tested Gramps versus Kama directly against each other a few times. And we even saw it in Solo. And this wasn't, that's not team play, but in Solo, we, we clearly saw that Kama was ahead of Gramps, right, when we were fighting Gwaine. But not by that much. I mean, they both could beat it. And the combo was more upgraded than the Gramps, but I could, I could clearly see that even if, if Gramps was a little bit more upgraded, he would have been very close to Kama, but he it was a little bit behind. Um, but in Solo, they're pretty comparable. There's not that much of a difference. And in team play, though, I do think it favors Kama, though. Gramps is kind of awkward in team play sometimes. But yeah, there's loads of good assassins. There's no shortage of of really strong assassins of all, of all rarities. Uh, Kama is really good, but ultimately there's so many assassins that are so good. In general gameplay, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter which one you're using. And then which one ends up being better when it does matter is based on like, okay, is there a gimmick where you're gonna really wanna have something like charm? Or is there a gimmick where you're gonna wanna have like, you know, just huge burst damage? Or is it a fight like the Lost Belt 4 tree, well, it's not for assassins, but where like you don't need burst damage because it's so many health bars, but it's smaller health bars, right? Like th those things are ultimately, do you need piercing vulnerability? Do you, you know, do you need buff removal? Like ultimately which one of them ends up being the best in a practical s s scenario, it's normally just based on the fight. It's a case by case basis. And for general gameplay, you know, you, I, I'd say for general gameplay, Pop Kama probably is the best, but not by enough for it to have any impactful difference on anything, so, like, who cares? That, that's not to say Kama's overrated, though, because she is very, 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 very good. It's just so is other assassins. Yeah, Yen, Yen's not... Like, there are a lot of good four-star assassins, right? Carmilla, god, Carmilla's amazing even, again, if they're not female. Carmilla does huge damage, can loop pretty easily, makes a lot of stars, gives damage support for the team, very consistent damage, loads of soft survivability, very, very high soft survivability. And that's against males, or non-gendered, and, and, you know, boars, and that kind of thing. And then when they're female, she just hits like a, you know, fucking truck again. And, you know, so for four-star, Carmilla's amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. But Yan? Mm -mm, mm -mm. There's plenty of good four-star assassins. Yan ain't one of them. I hate to say that because he's cool, but uh, yeah, he is not uh, not top of the line. Could you all kill my fucking fodder units? Holy shit! Mel, you know, obviously is really weird because she's not an assassin, so it's not really fair. So like. When you look at the times that Melt is busted and she makes Haunt it so much easier, it's when you're fighting like a foreigner or when you're fighting multiple cavalry classes. It's like, oh, one boss is an assassin and the other one is a caster, right? Or And things like that. Uh, so like the caster would shred Kama, right? But they won't do shit to, to Melt and stuff. Uh, so let's, if you're fighting a rider boss, like a really tough rider boss, and it's Kama versus Melt, uh, Melt still actually keeps up pretty well, and that's why Melt is so good, because if it is a direct class comparison like that, Melt's still fine. Melt does huge damage, he has enough survivability to not just get bulldozed by like, oh man, the boss quick charges into their MP when you break the health bar. Uh, you know, she can deal with that. Um, so yeah, Melt's really good. Melt, Melt's very, very, very good alter ego, but alter ego is a very weird class, and they're, they're not needed often, but when they are needed, they're normally broken. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of hard to compare, just because... If it's a straight rider, I would say Kama is normally better, but some some fights, you, the charm isn't going to work or is not necessary, and so you just might want the the full Melt go burr. Melt's really strong. <laughs> Melt's really fucking strong, especially on JP. She's got the Spriggan buff, so a little bit bananas. Mm. Yan is better on JP, like, he's, he's good, I mean, he's, I don't know, like, good, he's usable, he's not bad anymore, I wouldn't really say he's great, um, but if you like him, you can definitely make him work, but he's nothing phenomenal. Yeah, Don, I think Donzo's way better now since her upgrade, I've used her a decent amount since she got upgraded, and I, I do think she's way better. We're gonna lose again unless we get really lucky. We're just, it's, I, I, I don't understand, I mean, we're, we just cannot get our taunts killed, even though this Camaro does a million damage. Uh, and by the time they do die, you know, I just haven't gotten anything done. 
Yep, okay. Well, uh, I'm sure it's possible for Asterios to beat this. He, he was so close. He, he literally would have beat it first try if he didn't get double crit on that last turn. Because then we would have evaded and we would have killed one and then we would have killed the other one. Um, but yeah, we uh, we either need to bring taunts or uh, we're going to have to switch units. I think we're going to switch units here. I'll bring someone with survivability. What's coming up? There is a caster stage coming up, but I don't think we'll need Ushi for it, so I'll use Ushi now. She should be able to get this done. I want her to do normal card damage, I think. You know what? I'll use the event CE. I should have given that to Asterios. Wait. I'm I'm conflating the event CE with that other one they just added. I'm thinking of this one. That's the one that I want. There we go. The extra evade I think will actually be kind of nice here. I think Melt is definitely better than Ilya, let's be real, it's just Ilya, but uh, yeah, Melt is definitely better. She's, she's fine though, I mean, they're, they're, she works. She can be super, super strong. But yeah, Melt is pretty nice. Melt is so good that you can use her even when an alter ego isn't exactly what the doctor ordered, right? And, and pretty easily. I mean, you could do that with Ilya as well, just not as smoothly, I would say. God, nice hand! Awesome! Give me one second, I need to check something, and I'm gonna run to the restroom. When I come back, I expect to see a taunt wall dead. I like how they call them taunt walls, but they're not taunt walls. They don't have taunt. They're just freeloaders. Why are none of them dead? W why? They didn't even attack. They didn't even attack. They have three buffs. My evade is not gone, and the other two don't have any damage. I, 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 I don't even. This fucking game, man. Um, I almost, because she's a writer, I'm gonna make the stars now, because the, she basically has a star absorb buff all the time, because writers, man. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I don't know why they gave Ushi a crit buff, but they did. How, why does she get that kind of luck? Why does she get that kind of luck? She is so much. She she is so much better prepared for this stage than Asterios is. But she's getting lucky as fuck. Like, like 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 she could beat this without good luck, and yet she's getting really good luck. Look at this. She still has the evade. She still has the fucking evade from uh, the CE of all. Th like, come on. This is nonsense. I'm foolery, I say. Okay, now it's gone. There's really no reason to go for my NP, or we'll just kill him. She is such a good unit now. I mean, she was already great. One of the best three stars out there. Definitely the best three-star rider. Uh, although Ricky Boy is really good. Ricky Boy is really good. They complement each other well. 
Um, but yeah, then he buffed her again, and now she's just totally top of the line. Three star. So fucking strong. Thankfully, though, she, her buff did not trivialize Ricky. Ricky's thing is he can repeat MP easier than, than Ushi can. And he definitely has less, like, upfront value. You know, Ushi is very just straightforward. You know, I've got a hard survival skill. I've got damage up. My NP's upgraded. You know, it's just, you know, very, like, generic value. But it's good. It's so, mu it's so much generic value that it's kind of, you know, you know, boom, stars. Right, uh, Ricky's, you know, a bit more finesse there, but, uh, yeah, Protoku needs help. I cannot believe they have not buffed, at least buffed his NP. I cannot believe they haven't done that. Like, if they buff his NP, and it's a carbon copy of, of Ku's buffed NP, which I think they will do that because lol the lore, um, because their NPs are exactly the same, but, uh, he, he they, they need to buff his NP and make it better than regular Ku's. He needs to get the sure hit, and then he needs to get like a quick up before damage. Uh, that way, that'll linger into his like his star gen, so he's more likely to crit. And if he does like Buster quick quick, he might make an extra a couple of stars, and then get uh, like a star. Let's be honest, his hit count is bad. Um, anyway, but you know, a little bit better on the crits, a little bit better on the damage. Uh, that would help him a lot. That's the only way I can think of to fix Protoku in one buff to like be at least somewhat sensible when compared to, to regular Ku is give him an NP buff. Get the sure hit, get the upgraded damage, and then give himself quick up, like 20% or 30% or something crazy for two or three turns. If you do 30%, I'd make it two turns. If you do 20%, I'd make it three turns. You could do you could do crit stars on MP2. You could do that. That's almost boring, but uh, that that would be fine, and that would work well with what he does, obviously. So. And it would help his teammates more. That's another thing. Because it's like, yo, yeah, I can I can NP in the next turn. If he gets stars, I can use his star absorb skill and his crit skill and use those stars to go boom, boom, nice and smooth. But oh, you know, oh darn, Protoku didn't get any good cards. But this unit did, so I'll just use the stars on them and maybe they'll, you know, grab a crit or whatever. So, you know, that would be definitely good. But, uh, yeah, they seem to be kind of slow with the update for, uh, Protoku. They seem kind of gun-shy around prototype stuff. Because I'm not sure they even know what they want to do with prototype moving forward. But I, I would hope by now they have a plan. And like, okay, you know, two years from now we're gonna, you know, make, announce this anime. Or, or we're gonna make a book. Or we're gonna do a, a collab event. I, I would hope they've at least got a plan by now, but I don't, I don't know. And that's obviously independent of DW, that's, you know, Type Moon. I wish you could just not bring fodders. I should bring a filler archer. No Bukatsu, let's go. I mean, there's no single best unit for team play, but I mean, I don't know, Merlin probably. Like, if you're not power gaming, like, oh my god, I gotta three turn everything. If you're just trying to, like, you know, win and be able to win, like, no matter what, Merlin is generally the uh, way to go. I mean, like, all of my accounts are free-to-play. <laughs> this, this one's not, you know, it is free-to-play, but that's, you know, again, that's not a very distinct feature. It's just, like, a lot of my way to... You know, I, this account has loads of rare things, you know, it has K-Scope and bullshit, but I only use the three-star stuff. So... Oh yeah, Castor Toria is super good too. It's not, it's not just about the looping and the that nonsense. Hey, that's not a name I can say at all. But thank you for the uh, the uh, continued suck, man. I appreciate it. I remember your name, but I don't know how to say it. So that guy. Yeah, I did our our sub. That should be tied to not my computer though, but let me see. Did 
Do, 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 okay. Do a test one. That's still pretty loud. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have a little bit of Moriarty action here. Let's see. I'm not sure if that's even changing. Let, let me, okay, let me turn it like super low and see if it's actually changing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's changing. Okay, hold up. There we go. That's better. Let me just subscribe to myself, obviously. No, I can test it. I, there's a button I can click. I, I can play a sub sound whenever I want to. There's a little button I can click there. I, I think I got it there on that last one, though. We, we sorted it out. Streamer not sub stick in my head. I don't think I can sub to myself. You know, people do that to like inflate their sub count or something. I don't know. I, like, you can always gift it sub though. Hey, look, it's balding. He's got a gimmick. Now, I want. This seems to do more than just. It looks like it does something else other than just crit up. Unfortunately, he's not gonna. Unless it's guts, he's not gonna live long yeah, enough yeah, for yeah. us to ever figure out what that other effect is. Subbing to yourself would be a net loss though because half of it goes to Twitch. So that you wouldn't uh wouldn't do any good. And in taxes, you'd be paying yourself in taxes because you have to pay taxes at the end of the year. Although, there is, like, an amount that you get, like, through donations, like, up to a certain amount that you don't have to pay taxes on, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but after a certain point, you do. But then also, but what you, that only counts up for donations. It doesn't count for, like, ad revenue and other things like that. Mendo. Taxes, man! Oh. <laughs> yeah, Caesar's damage is really good. His buff was, uh, was something. It's fun though, and like, I, I think it's fair though, I really do, because he, he doesn't have a battery skill, he doesn't have an MP gain buff, he does not have a very good gain rate, so he's very slow to get his MP unless you sacrifice things on the team to give him gain, uh, and uh, yeah, but the payoff is worth it, right? Well, normally, some fights unnecessary, but, uh, and while he's at it, he does team support as well, so, good unit. Bunch of XP. Alright, there it is. This is a good bit harder than the other stages. It's not like crazy hard or anything, but uh, it's a step up from what we have been doing. Sorry, Kojiro. Alright, off we go. Imagine if Jinkei's payoff was worth it, indeed. Meanwhile, 100 faces over there. Guys, what if they buff 100 face again instead of buffing Jinkei again? That would suck. I mean, as someone that has a gray old 100 face, I, I would make use of it, but uh, definitely not a necessary thing to do. What would you buff on her face? I mean, you could give her a star bomb, you could uh, do buff removal. I mean, the thing is, lore wise, they can justify anything with 100 face. Because the whole thing is, although each one of the 100 assassins is not physically strong, they're all incredibly skilled in a specific thing. Like, they're, they're masters of whatever, like, thing that they focused on, right? So some of them are amazing at, like, detecting booby traps or setting booby traps or. Uh, you know, being stealthy or, uh, you know, poisoning a drink or, you know, 
pyrotechnics, you know, whatever, you know, they're all super specialized in something and they're super, 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 super good at it. So you can justify anything, you know, buff removal, buff removal block, you know, crit damage down with the crit down, if you, you know, you can do whatever the fuck, you, it, you can literally justify just about any effect in the game because of it. Um, so yeah, they could do anything. And in terms of like what she needs, I mean, she doesn't really need anything. Um, I guess battery, right? So if you're like, oh shit, I didn't get art cards for my NP, you know, you can offset that, or you just want to rush the NP, you know, battery is always nice. Um, you know, piercing vulnerability just to hit things you're not supposed to be able to hit. Uh, buff removal block. Low stars need buff removal block really badly. They have, like, none of it, and it's a huge problem, so anyone with it would be nice. God, give her that Masashi style buff where she doubles her hit count. Yeah, that would, uh,. That would be nasty. I should not have used that skill. I sh probably will get my first NP before I need it. So I should have used that skill after I NP'd. I should NP on like the second wave and then use the first skill again. Or use it at all, but no, I don't think it'll have it to be used again. Yeah, I think, I've always said I think Deer Mid deserves the hit count buff because it, it synergizes with his starter gen skill. It fits him lore-wise. Fits him lore-wise very well. Um, and he just needs something. Like, for God's sakes, he needs something. So, yeah, I'd like it. Give Deer Mid an animation update and a buff. Um, and so the new animations can accommodate for, you know, higher hit count. Because, like, with Masashi, a lot of her hits, you know, are kind of vague with, like, you know, the particle effects and stuff. So they can just have other numbers fly up just because you can do the same thing for him. I mean, Deermid is better than people give him credit for. He's definitely done dirty, though, because Ku is just better than him at everything except the buff removal thing. And occasionally, buff removal's big. But if you don't need buff removal, removal specifically, you don't really need Deermid instead of Ku, unless you need more Lancers, right? I guess the one time you'll see people use Baldi is sometimes when they just need a lot of fucking budget Lancers, so if you bring, like, all of them. Um, and so, you know, if you need Ku and another DPS Lancer, Deermid is an okay choice. But he is inferior to a lot of the other Lancers. You know, but he's, he is better than people give him credit for. A lot of times, all you need on like a free-to-play account or a new account or, or whatever is to just be able to do dam good damage to the boss like with an MP. You know, just get MP, hit it hard, and have some kind of survival to not just die if the enemy gets their MP. That's like all you need. And then he does all of those things. He has an okay gain rate. Nothing phenomenal by any means. He has an okay gain rate. He uh, has hard survival. He has an upgraded MP. It's quick, so it gets a little bit more damage. Uh, the buff removal is nice, and it's, even though it's after damage, it still removes things like guts, crit up, attack up, you know, defense ups, damage cuts, all kinds of weird, obnoxious effects. It's not like, it's not like evade and invulnerability is the only effect you'd ever want to use buff removal on. It's not. Loads of bosses literally wreck you because they have a crit buff. That's like their shtick. And it's funny, I see a lot of people that struggle with those bosses, and it's because they don't really try to do crit down or buff removal. Like, that's the thing, right? Um, so he is useful, he's certainly useful, but yeah, he's way outclassed. He's way outclassed by Ku. I, I think some people overrate proto Ku actually, definitely. Um, I, I think, I think it's two th it's, it's, this is a dumb thing, but this, it, I think this is very accurate to the, the player base. Um, I think some content creators overestimate proto Ku, and then a lot of the community is influenced by that and feels the same, but then a lot of the community uh, it, it thinks he's really, really bad. So, and these are all wrong, right? All of this is wrong. And I know this because I use a level 70 proto a lot, and I use a Braille proto a lot. I compare him in team and solo play all the time. It's one, he's a, I mean, dude, I've got him up on 10 and a half for like an unbelievable amount of time. I use him all of the time. And we've tested him countless times in countless scenarios, team, solo, everything. Uh, he is fine. He's, he's, if, he is a totally serviceable budget Lancer, but he does not exceed that. Ushi is beyond just a good budget writer. She's just not She's just not filling the gap, right? She is just so beyond that. Ku is so beyond that. Uh, I think Babbage is kind of at that point now. Uh, you know, and several other low stars are like that. David is, you know, going beyond what you would expect a three star to, to do. Protoku doesn't. Protoku is a totally, like, yeah, this is a totally good budget unit. You know, if you need to, you need to smack an archer in the face, you can do it. And if there happens to be a beast thing going on, he, you know, gets a very noticeable amount of bonus damage for a, a while, and that's really nice. 
but he's not consistent. His star gen is ass. Now, that's not that big of a deal. I see this said a lot. People will say, oh, well, Koo's bad because his star gen is low. Like, that does that. What matters is the sum of all your parts, right? What is the end result and what can you do? How much, how long can you live? How much damage can you do? What kind of utility do you, do you have? That's the ultimate check. You know, having good star gen is a, is a good thing to have. But just because you don't have good star gen, it doesn't mean the unit's suddenly shit, right? You have units like Hans and 2030, and there's all kinds of ways to supplement that. A million units with Star Bomb now. You can use Babbage. You know, if you got weird classes going on in, an, in a challenge quest, you're finding multiple different classes. You could use Babbage or Ushi or whatever in Star Bomb and still crit with Proto Coup. Uh, but, it, you know, he his crits, this is the thing. A little tricky to crit with Proto Coup. Not that hard, though. He's got a good Star Absorb skill, lasts multiple turns. Um, and there's just so many ways to, to make stars now. I mean, there's so many ways to make stars now. If you need to crit on a specific turn, you can set it up generally fairly easily. You have to sacrifice a little bit, for a budget player anyway. If you're, if you're going budget, you're going to have to sacrifice to, to include ways to crit. But it's not, it's not that big of a deal, generally. Sometimes it's smooth as butter. Sometimes it's a problem. Anyway, the issue is his crits aren't that big, right? Yeah, like, either nice, right? If they're a beast, it's really nice. If you... You're critting a beast, then he's just, he's destroying. It's the one time it's like hell yeah. But uh, if you're not doing that, his crits are like yeah, yeah, it's nice, but it's not it's not really game changing. And the fact that his attack stat is lower than Ku's, and then Ku has a generic attack up that works on everything, and then at, at low health it's a huge attack up, and then Ku has a a harder hitting MP. Overall, generally Proto Ku is doing less damage than Ku, and that was actually true sometimes even before Ku's most recent buff. And then Ku is also then living a significant amount of time longer, so he has more opportunities to do damage. And then he also can deal with debuffs better and things like that normally. Um, Proto Ku is better against like stun because of the preemptive um, buff resistance. But overall, Proto Ku is just like, yeah, he does okay damage. It's kind of a subpar NP, but he has above he has above normal survivability. Certainly not as good as Ku's by any means, but it's still above normal survivability. So slightly above normal survivability. Uh, pretty decent normal card damage. A little, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out, but it, it, it can. It's not too hard to set it up. But it's not, it's not, there are definitely times where... There are, like, dude, I know this. People, there are so many challenge quests where, especially as a budget player, like, even, like, or a newbie account, maybe you're willing to use high rarity stuff, but you don't have a lot of them. There are so many challenge quests where it's pretty clear cut. If you're going to do this in some kind of budgety way, you are going to have to do X and Y. This happens all of the time, and there's not always the X and Y might dictate you absolutely have to have a taunt, or you absolutely have to have something like David, or, or you know just certain things like that. And sometimes, and then you have to have a specific damage dealer. It's like the boss is this class, so you're gonna have to have this this damage dealer, um, or or like oh at the end of the fight, you know they turn into this class, so you have to at least have a backup unit. Like oh they turn into a caster, you need to have a, like they're really tanky, so you need Ushi in the back or whatever. That can really limit your options to what you can do with your DPS. So having DPSs that are completely self-sufficient uh, sometimes is, like, necessary. It's not it's not like a luxury, it's necessary. And that is a problem for, like, Proto-Q. If, if you're in one of those situations where you, you don't have the freedom to, to work in, you know, Hans or, or, or Mozart or something, because that, that happens. There are some set, you know, fights where it's like, that's not a thing. Like, no way. Um, or if you bring those things, you're just going to be so behind. I mean, maybe it'll still work, but it's just it's so behind if you did bring something that's so much better for the fight. Um, that there are just times Proto Coup just doesn't make sense. It just, it just doesn't. Like, there's it, it, a lot of other Lancers are just so much more self sufficient uh, that you're better off doing that and then, you know, focusing on those other units to, to, to deal with the more specific stuff. But he's fine. Proto Coup is totally fine. Uh, I rate him decently well on my tier list, but I mean, I've used him more than most people. And, uh,. There's no world where he's one of the better budget lancers. That's just not a thing. I mean, sure, he's better than, like, you know, Hector, right? Unless you need AoE specifically, but uh, he's really not, not that not that great. I mean, well, I mean, he's good, but he's not... No, no top tier. No way. <laughs> it's just nonsense. I mean, I've, this isn't some, like, ethereal concept. It's like... There's, there's a, re it's, the I always say this, the proof is in the pudding. People like to make bold claims about low stars, and they back it up with just bullshit, right? And then meanwhile, nothing supports it, right? When you look at the, the Japanese one to two star guy, who does use three stars a lot now, nowadays. Uh, so you look at that guy, 
And then you look at, you know, Ace of Hearts, you look at my stuff, you look at, and there's several other, uh, you know, bunch of people. You just don't, whenever it's like, man, you really need a Lancer, or it's like, okay, th there's no budget counterclass, so you have to fight it neutral. You know, uh, you know that happens a lot for low star stuff. Protocoon never makes the cut, ever, never. Not a thing. And hey, Marcellus, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the resub, man. So when it is something where you're forced to be at neutral, you know, you're looking at things like David, Robin, Ku, you know, Ushi, you know, those, all, and then sometimes more gimmicky, specific to the fight type servants as well. But those are the ones that, like, when it has to be neutral, that really shine. And then when it's counterclassing, if you only need, if you only need one, it, it's never a proto -coup. It's never a proto -coup. It's never Baldi either. Baldi and proto -coup are basically never used in those scenarios. They're just not, and it's like, that's not biased. There's way too many budget people doing it. And I know, because I'm in the trenches. I've done those fights, and I've tried to do them in budget setups, and Baldi just doesn't fucking work, and proto -coup just doesn't fucking work. But a lot of times, like, regular coup does, or if it's more neutral, then maybe it's Ushi, or, or you know, Darius even, for God's sakes, and things like that. Occasionally, they're good, especially when there's beasts involved. You know, when there are beasts involved, sometimes proto -coup does then make the cut. Um, but that's about it. That's about it. He, he needs a buff. Like, my fucking god, he needs a buff. And, uh, to be clear, I'm actually biased in Protoku's favor. Because I fucking love Protoku, and his design is one of my favorite designs in, in FGO. Uh, he's quite awesome. But because I like him so much, I have used him a lot, and it's very clear in Last Man Standing, in solo, and in team play, he is. Eh. And he's eh. He's, he gets the job done. You know, we can get stuff done. Now there are times, and this is no joke, this is not a meme. This is not a meme, it can be a meme. There are times that it's not the optimal thing to do, but it works anyway, but um, there are times where throwing coup, proto coup, caster coup, or, or if you got a friend, maybe someone coup alter or whatever, that is not a meme team, right? It can be, don't get me wrong, it, it can be a meme team, but the way protection from arrows works when everyone has it, uh, is kind of dumb, right? Like, it, when literally everyone has it, and you have a Mystico to fill in the gaps and stuff, uh, there are times where you can basically live forever. And there's been challenge quests where the enemy boss only has two actions per turn. The boss only has two actions per turn, and one of those actions could be a buff, right? And, and, and then so you have six charges of protection from arrows, right? Or, or, or even more if you've got, you know, three of them. You could have nine. Right? And they come back in five turns! It's like, the math here, it's like, oh shit, right? So, uh, like, there's times where Waver, like, there was, there was a challenge quest with Say and Waver, and you could, like, just nuke Say down really, really fast. You could put all the, the effort into the team to just murder Say, and all that's left is Waver. Now, if you did that, you probably wouldn't have a setup that could actually kill Waver very well. Because he, he had a decent amount of health and everything. But it didn't matter, because Waver only had two actions per turn. His MP doesn't do act, doesn't do damage, so every time his MP comes up, that's a guaranteed turn where he you know, can't really get anything done to get protection from arrows. And then sometimes he buffs. So if you if you beat Say and then you had like you know double coup proto coup out or double proto coup coup out or you know whatever fucking combo you want, uh, you couldn't die. Like I, I did it. I literally tested it. I didn't make a video for it, but I probably should have. You you could not die. Like it was, as long as you used your Mystic Code uh, relatively intelligently. Uh, there was basically no way to fucking die there. You could go forever, so it didn't matter how much health. Uh, so yeah, Protoku, because he can fit into that, that wombo combo team, that's pretty useful, right? Like, it's not, again, not a meme. That's a legit setup that can be very powerful sometimes. There have been, I can think of like four or five challenge quests where that wasn't necessarily the best budget option, but it was a very good budget option and it, you know, worked pretty well and it didn't require a lot of like, you know, crazy units that needed to be leveled or anything, so... I like how they just triple attacked. Not only did they not debuff, they triple attacked and only attacked Caster Coup. Uh, feels bad, man. Could y'all just kill Kojiro? He's literally at full health here. What ways could Baldi be buffed to make... Uh, the dodge and the MP... Or PF... Wait, well, I mean, his, his, his MP buff... It's never going to be like protection from arrows. One hit is just so different, uh, but it doesn't need to be. Baldi does not need to be about survivability, right? He does not need to be about that. He's offense, 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 offense right? So I, you should never do any kind of buff in that department. I always say though, the way to buff Baldi is he need, he can do a lot of damage when the stars align, right? Um, 
So what he needs is just to be able to make the stars align more consistently. How has how has Kodro taken look dude, this is bullshit. This yeah, I guess it's the divine thing. They must be divine headhunting. Um because yeah, that has to be it. Because we've gone through all the protection from arrows, the heal, and we've gotten hit a bunch. So we have to make our taunts uh divine. I'm surprised they still have that. Jesus, uh, we might be able to still win, but honestly, Kojo just like sitting around here is, is hurting us quite a bit. Uh, anyway, so Baldi needs to be able to, without having to like forcibly bring a bunch of specific supports and, and or just get really lucky with the way the deck shuffles and stuff, uh, he needs to be able to, you know, d consistently double MP. So he needs to be able to either have way better, you know, star bomb to eat crits, and crits mean more MP gain and things like that. Uh, so he needs either something like just. Star bomb, star gin, stars per turn, or battery. Just battery. So if he MPs once, so then oh, it didn't quite work out, and I can use the battery skill and get his MP again, right? Stuff like that. Uh, that would help him a lot. Um, the main issue is his damage output on his MP. If he gets two of them and gets a good hand, that's the tricky thing. You need to MP twice, and you need to get a good hand and have it crit. If you can do those things, he will do huge damage. Uh, if you don't, it's normally he's not really worth the investment. And a lot of times. Um, the way like challenge quests can work sometimes, he's never worth the investment. Sometimes the way break bars work and everything, it just doesn't make sense. Now there are times though where like maybe early on in the fight you don't need a lot of damage, you have weaker trash mobs. Uh, this is not a good example exactly because the fight was terrible for Baldi, but the the principle of like that challenge quest we just had, we had those really wimpy trash mobs, and then a really tough, you know, Moriarty shows up every once in a while. So d during those wimpy trash mob parts, um Baldi could you know, build up his damage. He could cast his MP and basically stock up damage for later, right? Another, la most lancers can't do that. If they, like, what are you gonna do, MP and a mob with 20k health? That, what the fuck is the point of that, right? Uh, so that, that can be useful for him, because maybe a break bar of the boss is lower, or there's certain gimmicks where you're supposed to stall. They've s definitely had gimmicks where you're supposed to stall for the first chunk, chunk of turns, and then go bananas. Um, and so in situations like that, it, he can be pretty, uh, Pretty good. Uh, sometimes there's gimmicks in place so that prevent him from being good, unfortunately. But... MP gain would be alright. I, I would prefer battery a million percent though, because MP gain would be tied to often even get good cards again. You really want to be able to get like MPs off without even needing cards, and then hope those cards are later. That's like that's the dream, right? You want to uh, just get your MP one way or the other, be it through waiver or scatty or something, or, or just your own, you know, uh, battery skill if you had it, or, or Hans, you know, you name it. And then NP, and then have cards to, to hit things in the face with, right? Because sometimes what happens is you you finally get like a good NP up, and you finally made the stars where you needed the stars, but then you don't get any cards, and it, it's like, well, shit. So uh, if Kojiro wasn't here, and I could you know brave chain every turn, I could be looking all right. But I'm a little worried here. Yeah, I'll make my taunts divine, or I'll bring a stronger unit, but yeah, we, might, we might lose this. Baldi just blows my mind, man, because again, when he came out, I was so hyped. I remember when he was added to the game, this was like, in not on NA, on JP. On NA, there's all this pre-hype because of JP. But in, in NA, he got added out of nowhere, uh, he was just a three star, everyone else was more hyped for the other stuff, uh, initially. Uh, but I instantly was like, oh my god, I love his design, I love his voice actor, really unique gameplay, which it is, his gameplay is very unique, it's fun. Yeah, they, they target Divine. Um, anyway, so I, you know, and so I've used, I used him a lot from the get-go, and, you know, I've always kept tabs on him. But he's never, he's never been able to really impress. He's never, like, been a complete disappointment, it's not like he sucks. But uh, he's never been like, oh man, this one challenge quest is so tough for like free to play or new players or budget, and and Baldi makes it so easy. Not a thing. Never, never been a thing. Um, he's just, and a lot of times, if you you know, if he's like the only lancer on your account, right? He's just so not helpful in so many situations. You know, occasionally, sure, but uh, he's con and again proofs in the pudding. Very rarely, and I'm a very rarely does he get used by me, Ace of Hearts, the Japanese one to two star, such as one to three star guy. Uh, you know, just so so rarely is he used by any of those people, and that's not 
I don't think any of those people, and I know for myself, I don't, I don't think any of us dislike him. I think all of us think he's really cool, and uh, we want him to work, but he don't. And people keep saying he's god tier, and yet they never produce anything of him being god tier, right? Like, at best, they'll do something with him that's really easy, that you could do with anything, uh, or they give him, like, the strongest supports ever, like, literally top of the line everything, really rare CE, really many rare supports, and then when you use that that quality of, of, of support for other people, that one did, that one killed Kojiro. Anyway, when you use that, that quality of stuff for other supports, other Lancers, they do just as well and so oftentimes better. Like, I've seen that so many times where people are like, oh look, Baldi with literally every support under the sun beat this, this challenge quest, and then you you support, you know, so many other Lancers of that and they'll beat it faster or on par. You know, it's like, who cares, right? And that's, if people want to keep saying he's God tier, it's like, show me something. You know, get money where the mouth is, right? But I never see it. Yeah, the music is looping. I, uh, I see that. Oh, new computer, same old problems. Okay, let's see if that fixes it. Alrighty, we need to win pretty soon here. This is looking a little grim. Thank God, though, for Hans's buff. Hans' buff is a godsend to Kojiro, because anyone can have Hans, right? No no strings attached, don't have to roll at a certain time, don't have to start playing the game at a certain time, don't have to rely on support. But even if you do rely on a friend support, you could summon a friend, Scatty, and have your own Hans. That's the thing, right? That's why leveling Hans is important. I've seen people say you don't need to level Hans because you can always summon a friend's waiver or something. Bullshit, right? A lot of times if you are trying to support a unit like like Baldi, you're gonna need more than just the one thing you summon from your friend, right? It's not like you can have Baldi, Scatty, and a bunch of garbage and have it work, right? You need other things to get in there. And Hans is a great one because Scatty doesn't make stars, right? Uh, she at least gives you quick up, but, you know, Hans gives you such a guaranteed chunk of stars and battery, which is exactly what Baldi needs. Uh, Hans's buff is definitely the best thing for Baldi because Again, you summon a friend's OP support, you have your own Hans. You can make some you can make something work there, you really can. Again, though, you can summon a friend Scatty, use Hans, and get a hell of a lot out of Ku and and Hermit or Proto Ku or whatever as well. But I it, it's a it's a thing, it's a real thing, it, it really does work. So Hans' buff uh definitely made Baldi uh uh this thing has double defense up. That uh that concerns me. I'm gonna try to target switch, but I don't think it's gonna work. Because uh they still have a decent amount of health here, but we'll see. I'm hoping that defense up is not very big. Double Hans with double 20-30. Let's go. Oh shit, that was better than I was thinking. Never mind. We're good. Victory music, I'll take it. That song is from a rhythm game, I'm pretty sure. Previous one. If I remember correctly, if you have limit broken 2030 and double Hans, you make 50 stars every turn for three turns. Uh, and the cooldown is only five turns, so massive uptime on critting there. Uh, you only have room for one DPS, and then obviously Hans will be taking up a lot of your cards. So it's not it's not quite as good as it sounds. But, uh, it is, it is good. Now this is some good music right here. I wonder if we have another... No, not yet. Um, well, I guess Alexander. Man, King DDD's theme is like a masterpiece, man. I love it. Okay, chat, this is a random one, but who do you like more, Kirby or King DDD? Just purely off like aesthetic, attitude, you know, role and you know, all that. Just you know, which one do you like better? 
I gotta go with DDD on that one. I, it look, it's pretty close. There's uh, looking like Kirby. Okay, it was at the start there. I, th I thought DDD was winning, but now Kirby is coming back with an absolute vengeance. Yeah, if we got a mod here. We, we could do a poll. Why not? I, I think Kirby's gonna win though, based off what I just saw. But we'll see. My favorite's Gooey, I would say. And then, like, a lot of the trash mobs, dude. Some of the trash mobs in Kirby's in the Virgin Grid. Like, Blade Knight and Sword Knight. Night Knight. That one's not a thing. Although, with the way Kirby is, it would not surprise me if they did Night Knight and it was, like, a sleeping theme. That would not surprise me at all. So I like Waddle D. Waddle D's great, but Waddle Do though. Uh, my favorite DDD theme is either this one or like the Brawl one, I would think. But I don't know, there's a lot of them, so I'd have, I'd have to go through them all to be sure. But I like this one a lot, to be honest. It's like, it's a little bit more modern, right? It's a little bit more. Upbeat, I guess, but a bit more instrumentation compared to like the really old ones, but it still has that classic feel, right? Really good mix there. I guess I charm just to uh, not take as much damage here. Never mind. That's what happens when you don't level your skills. Damn, we don't have a mod for a pull, so it's bad. Kirby lore is a trip. I'm gonna have to wrap up soon. I'm gonna try to, just, just because I'm so tired. I mean, I am, like again, it, it, concentrating is, is a chore right now, but uh, I'm gonna try to like get through most of my main units so I'm not completely whipping today. I would love to sit down and play this event and see like how you know the, the cooldown stuff starts to affect this account. Like I wanna see it. Like time will catch up with this account way more so than most accounts. And uh, certainly more than my main. My main can pretty much go indefinitely if I want to. Oh there we go, we got a poll. Thank you, Kev. Wow, Kirby is absolutely killing it. Man, my, my DDD fans, we gotta we gotta represent here. This this is a fucking slaughter. Wait, Cap, you messed up. You, you got it so people can vote with channel points. So uh, that this is massively inflated. I, I knew something was wrong. Like, wait a second. There's not that many Kirby fans here. Yeah, we now have significantly more votes than we have people in chat. So. Uh, Yeah, that ain't, that ain't, I like how DDD is actually running it back, but I have a feeling that's channel points, not actual votes. But, uh... Somebody is going absolutely bananas. Someone is using, like, all of their saved up channel points right now. Someone's like, DDD is fucking winning this. Voter fraud, yeah, a little bit. Oh my god, DDD is winning right now. Is there a Kirby fan... Zealous enough to, 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 to use all of their channel points. Thank you, I like the one, two, three. 32 month resale. That's a long time. Uh, if I need AoE again, Fuma's a good option to hold on to. Let's go 100 base. We actually have a lot of assassins on this account. How about that? At least we're not wanting for fodder units, although we probably will have to start using our golds, but I don't... I don't know if I want to break the rules like that or not, so we'll see. Like maybe we just have to deal with the not having fodders sooner than most accounts would. Because yeah, we're actually all... We're, this is pretty much the last one I can use fodders on. Maybe one more. That's right, I, know I, didn't, I didn't level Samson on this account. I wonder why. Imagine not leveling Sanson on a budget account that doesn't get to farm a lot. 
So DDD one. Uh, well, no, it's not over yet, but uh, I I do think that's inflated. It has not quite ended yet. Yeah, we have five thousand votes, like almost six. Now we've like six thousand votes coming up here. I don't think I. I'm not gonna lie, chat. I uh, I don't think I have six thousand viewers. I don't, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's happening. I gotta say, thank God, because I don't- I don't need that kind of money. And, and- no hate for big streams! A lot of big streamers do great work and the, you know, very high quality and all that great- great stuff. But when you have that many people in chat, there is literally no talking to anyone. And now, I'm not gonna lie, there's not much talking to anyone right now because I'm delirious from lack of sleep, but... Uh, it is nice to be able to actually talk to chat, and chat is like a mile a minute, right? It's, uh... Oh my god, Kirby ran it back at the last second. It's basically tied though. The, their difference in votes is so minor. They're, they're both count as 50%. But Kirby did just edge it out there. Uh, I suspect if we do another poll that's not rigged, I, I do think Kirby is going to win. Because before people started using channel points, Kirby was winning. Um, now maybe someone started spamming channel points immediately, and that's why, but... I, I do think Kirby is going to win. And I think it won't be that close, but... Uh, I'm definitely on Team DDD though, he's awesome, dude. Love his design and just kind of funny. And who doesn't like antagonists? The thing is, I always say that, and antagonists normally are popular. But universally, if you like, if you don't never, never mind like Reddit and never mind that stuff. But when you get like really big sample sizes and stuff for like TV shows and, and books and whatever, generally the most popular character is the main character, not just main cast. Normally, the main character is the most popular character for for most. Uh, stories, so. Which is very bizarre to me, because I almost never like the main character in, uh, in anything. There are exceptions, of course, but... I mean, I think occasionally people are hated for like the antagonist, not that often. I mean, it's pretty normal that people like, you know, uh, the Joker, or... Or, uh, you know, just whatever anime villain. That's just pretty... You don't you see that. You see that a good amount. Oh, you have to refresh? I don't even see a vote. Okay, when I refreshed, I did indeed see a vote. But, yeah, basically no one can see it. And if you have to refresh to get it, ain't nobody gonna... You, you look, look at our sample size. Normally when we, when we do votes, right, we get way more than that. Uh, most people cannot be bothered to, to refresh, and I don't, I don't really blame them. If you're just chilling and listening to the stream, right, you're like, eh, eh, eh. fuck it. DDD is winning, though, so I'll, you know, I, I guess the, uh, people willing to put in the effort, uh, like DDD more? I don't know. I don't know, it's tied now. I don't know, we'll see. There's no, uh... Really, it just borked, and I don't think we're gonna get a proper sample size for DDD versus, uh, Kirby this stream. It's, it's too fucked up. It, it, the time has passed. I, I, I like how I'm doing the Buster attack first, because I don't have faith that he was going to do enough damage with his MP. It is so close. It is, they're dead tied right now. It literally comes down to one vote. Yep, I was right. If I did that Buster attack, he, the enemy would have had 4k health left and I wouldn't have target switched, so... They're tied again. And if anyone cares, you know, refresh and get in there and vote. They've only got 30 votes each, right? So, pretty small sample size. They're literally tied at 31-31. What is this? Only a few seconds left. Thirty-three, thirty-two. Oh shit! Oh, thirty-three, 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 thirty-four. Oh, Kirby with the two-vote lead now, and at the last second, Kirby got it. God damn it! My 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 boy dropped his club. Where, where's your Kirby theme, though? 
DDD's theme is legendary. Where is your Kirby theme? There is no like generic Kirby theme. You get like his victory, victory dance music. No, nobody gives a shit about that. That's actually a lie. Uh, people do like Kirby's victory music, but uh, not as much as DDD's theme. Okay, it's better of your time. Oh yeah, Jekyll and Hyde. That's a filler unit. I don't know why I was thinking we didn't have filler units left. We we still any yeah, baldy, yeah, red hair. Yeah, we we still got uh, some doo doos in here. Gooey is where it's at, though. It's been two games. And the second game that he's in is not very good, so we ignore that one. Meta Knight's pretty popular, uh, I would think. He's got good music too. I like his minions more than him though, honestly. Their armor is just cooler, so... Watch this mad NP gain with our no, our no art guard. Probably should've killed the one with the attack buff. A little poison, it's kind of annoying. Could have at least done my debuff resistance. Oh, guarded it anyway. Can we get a prototype event? Even if it's fragments. I want regular prototype, but if they do fragments, surely, chat, surely, they will give an animation update to Jekyll and Hyde and buff him. Like, God, can you imagine if they buff Jekyll and Hyde and it's one of those eh buffs? Like, just like, kind of like Jin K is like, eh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. But it doesn't, like, he is so behind. He is, he, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's like, there are some units. There's not a lot. There's really not a lot. But there's a few units in this game that are just awful. They are so behind the curve, right? They're, they're, they have fallen off the truck entirely, right? There is not a lot of units like this, but Jekyll and Hyde is one of them. But I just don't get it. So often, they'll do these, like, revolutionary buffs that just give a super facelift to a unit, but they're normally the units that are fine, right? And then they, they have Jin K, who is certainly not as bad as Jekyll and Hyde, but is not, not that great, and she just gets such a... Eh. It's like, eh, it's, it, it barely changes anything, right? It changes a little bit, but it's not, you know, it's not consistent at all. And then Kyohime, really crappy buff, right? You know, so can we, I want Jekyll and Hyde to get one of those buffs like Hohenheim, where it's like, oh my god, this changes everything, right? He needs one of those big, giant ass shot in the arms, and it just totally turns the unit around. But, um, I don't think they will. I think at some point they probably will buff him, but it'll just be like, yeah, yeah, star bomb or something, you know, and it's like, it helps, but it's not a, it's not enough to turn the unit around by any means. Like, he needs a massive fucking buff. He needs two buffs, really. He needs, he needs two really impactful buffs. That's what he needs. Uh, and an animation update. Buff Fujino. I, I think Fujino will be buffed at some point. Might not be anytime soon. But uh, at some point, they're going to raid her up again, and that's not, not necessarily when they would buff her, but I, I do think she's getting buffed uh, somewhere in here. Shame they didn't do anything with her in that summer event, though, because she got way more focus in that summer event than most of the other characters did. I don't know why, but she did. I think Nasu just likes Fujino, so that's probably why. He's like, you know, this character hasn't gotten a lot of focus in a very, very, very long time. She never got any writing in K and K. She's not in the K and K event. So I guess that's why. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't directly seen him say that she was one of his favorites, but that does not surprise me. I kind of felt like that might be the case. I think Fujino is a good character, though. She's pretty well written, and uh, you know, not not just a uh, archetype.
What's coming up again? I think it's Archer. It's not that hard of a stage, though. What do we got here? new voice lines. They're not like my favorite ever, but they're fine. I wish they weren't so stingy with buffs. They're just so... They want buffs to be a big thing. But it kind of sucks. Because they do it that way, it's, they're unbelievably slow, and generally the add units almost faster than the buff units. That's not quite true, but uh, you get what I mean. Um, you know, the rate of... of uh, of buffs are just not fast enough. It really isn't. And like some units just get left in a terrible state for too long. But the other side of it is when they're so slow with buffs, that's why it feels so bad when they do buffs like today, where it's a unit that doesn't really need it gets a whatever buff and it, you know, it feels like a waste, right? This was an opportunity for a lot of other things that could really, really use it. And because there's so few opportunities, it feels really bad. If they weren't so random with how they you know they always they want buffing to be like oh man get it get hype right they try to wait until it's thematic or it's you know you know like an event like like uh new year's or, or anniversary or something right and i just i don't think that's the right way to approach game balance it doesn't make any sense you know when the opportunity arises sure do some thematic stuff but when you have a unit like jekyll and hyde right there's no reason to have them just sitting like that for years right it's silly Yeah, I'm surprised Blackbeard didn't get any focus in this event at all. I, uh, I thought he might. Man, I want to keep playing, and I want to, you know, use all my units. Hardly anything's on cooldown right now, but man, I am just... Oh, boy. Blasted by lack of sleep. I, did, I I want to test the account, and we can't test the account unless we get far enough into the event for like the the cooldown things are catching up with us, right? Because it'll affect this account more than just about any. I hope we get a K&K 2 collab. I don't think they'll do that for a while because there's so many other things you need to catch up with like Prototype and uh, Redline, Tsukihime now, things like that. But it, that would be awesome because the K&K event was pretty old. So you definitely can do more in-depth events now. And uh, yeah, if we could get Toko in the game, you know, that'd be swell. Look at water. I'm going through water like a beast today. I don't know what's up, man. I'm just like down in it like crazy. Let me just go uh, grab some real quick. Also, I need to put a breathing thing on so I can actually, you know, breathe. That's uh, good. Needing oxygen.
素晴らしい<笑>
It's a little awkward though, because the guts lasts three turns. So if you're in a team setting, it might, it, you might have times where, where the guts wear off before you die because you have two hits of not taking any damage. In solo though, it's, you'll pretty much always get value out of both. It'll buy you two, this will buy you two turns pretty much always, which that's, that's quite good. Getting two guaranteed turns out of one skill, like that's no joke. But uh, yeah, she's pretty good. I think she's a pretty good unit. I, I don't mind her. I don't like super hyper, but I, I don't mind her. I think she's kind of cool. Uh, fits what she's based on, right? And, and, and I'm not like, I would never roll on her by any means, but uh, if I get spook fire or something, I'm not gonna complain. I'm not, it's fine. I, I don't think I'd love her anytime soon though, but you know, I, I think she's, you know, so she's a job of representing what she's based on. Her gameplay seems uh, Rip Vlad, though. Oh yeah, and she has buff removal resistance. And every every goddamn time there's a challenge quest with buff removal. Any any time you have setups that have buff removal resistance, it makes those challenge quests so much easier. Like way disproportionate to like any other mechanical interaction, because most other interactions they're kind of betting on you doing it. Right? Uh, so it's not balanced around that. Most bosses that have buff removal, they do not balance them around you being able to stop it. So if you can stop it, it like disproportionately swings in your favor by like a lot. Yeah, I think she's unlimited. I'm pretty sure she's a uh, permanent. He had permanent five stars from time to time. You know, Achilles. Achilles was permanent, which I'm very surprised by, but I'm completely okay with it. Yeah, I was saying earlier, I think her first ascension could have, should have been like how it is, but even more so, like, you know, more like normie clothes, right? You know, if people want to be more conservative. And then the second stage should be as it is, pretty much. I think that totally fits what she's based on just fine. And then her third stage should be like hardcore mecha, right? Just go, because like, it's, I think for once, they can really justify the mecha nonsense. I think, you know, because she's a statue coming to life, I think it works in anime form. Oh yeah, Virtua's permanent. But yeah, I would have stage three, super mecha, like very heavy mecha stuff. Uh, stage two as it is, stage one, normie clothes, pretty much. And uh, I, you know, unfortunately, sometimes the... I, I doubt they were willing to put in that kind of effort though, because her stage three is just nothing. I mean, her stage three is basically her stage two, except she has like this headband floating behind her. I, I don't know. That, that's pretty much it, right? Like it's it's a it's nothing. Man, Gundam Thunderbolt is a trip. Let's see what's coming up. The thing is what's coming up doesn't matter because I'm gonna run out of stream time and not unit stuff. I think I can use my berserkers however I want. I don't think I need to save them for anything specific. And this cooldown reduction is not even gonna matter because uh, I'll mostly try to play this on stream. I might play, what I might do off stream sometimes if I, if I have time is um, do filler st stages. Let's say I end the stream on floor 20, right? I might do up to 20, you know, nine or something off stream eventually before I stream again. Um, just, just to, you know, say, not be so wasteful. Um, I, I, fuck, I got water and I left it in the kitchen. <sighs> AFK the stream. We're actually playing that AFK game. I don't know why that exists, but it does. Like AFK Arena, I've, I've like never even watched the gameplay in that game. I just see ads for it a lot. People always complain about Raid Shadow Legends ads, but I, I see way more ads for um, AFK Arena. Look, man, real life is tough, you know, you gotta, you gotta do things. Alright, I got, I got 
fucking pistachios. I'm ready. That's the good stuff. So, if I could make it to floor 20 on this stream, that would be great. The issue is simply my lack of sleep. That's the, uh... You know, uh, uh, Berserker versus Berserker is one of the least practical things you can do. Yeah, I won't do it. In case I, I might run out on one of the other classes. Um, we have an abundance of casters. You know what? Let's see. There is a rider coming up. We have Hundred Face and Fuma. There we go. The CE is too strong right now because of the event bonus. I'm surprised I don't have Leyline at 16. That's clearly going to be my next one, but... My main account is sitting on like four 55, level 55 CE bombs. So I'm hoping when the Yang CE returns, I can just instantly make it 100. So when we, when we want to show off how busted it is, we're just boom, ready to go. Unfortunately, this account doesn't have Ricky Boy leveled. What a mistake. We will, ab if we ever get to Lost Belt 5, uh, we will absolutely level him for that though. Like, no question. Lost Belt 5 is going to be very difficult on this account, and uh, Ricky is one of the best things ever for Demeter, so. Although I guess it's easier now because of Ushi. Ushi being buffed. That's no joke. A free crit turn? You, if you get a crit turn out of her, that's a pretty big value shift, honestly. That's a good chunk of the health bar. <laughs> Zeus is gonna be a problem. I have no idea how to beat Zeus on this account. And I've already beat him with one to three stars before. That's not the problem. It's it's the craft essences. Like I I, I do not have a plan. There there is no plan. <laughs> If Phantom got crit a lot, he actually could lose this, but we should be fine. Dude, I can't believe anyone would think Romulus was good for the Zeus fight. He's not terrible, but my god, there's nothing exceptional about him there. The man is an AoE, AoE Lancer in a single target fight against a ruler. Like, what? Guess the damage, chat. Can he kill it? I mean, I'm, he should definitely kill it with the, Oh, it's a crit. Okay. Forty K. Let's see. Got that attack buff. Forty-two and thirty-eight, which averages to about forty. So, uh, about right. Oh yeah, I think our attack buff was the switch missed to code attack buff, so it's not as big. So this has always been a thing, especially for new players, but people wondering if hit count affects damage. Am I the only one that started playing FGO and I realized immediately that it didn't? Because it... If you're just paying attention to like attack stats and the units you're using, it's just obvious that it doesn't. Like it, it does not take very long to realize 
that uh, you know the hit count like spreads out throughout the or the damage is spread out throughout the, the total move set. Like, I, I remember I, I figured that out on my own back where NA existed. Since, I figured it out like day one. It was just like, oh yeah, it's clearly how that works. Like it's super obvious. But yeah, for, since the beginning of FGO, people some, some not a lot, but some people have always thought that, and uh, people wonder about it like all the time. Like new players and stuff. Now, if you're super new, I get it, but uh, if you if you do any kind of like paying attention, it's really obvious. And I could tell. I remember flat damage. The first time I used a flat damage thing, I think I used covering fire. The crap does. I immediately was like, oh yeah, it clearly only. You know, I get it spreading out the flat damage amongst all hits, not per hit. So like, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't do that. But yeah, NP gain star gen. Yeah, that that's affected by hit count. That's the uh, that's the good shit right there. Oh god, we are out of riders, aren't we? Alright, let's see how Antonio does. Might use the event CE now to be a bitch. When we have to start playing at neutral, that's when things are going to get a bit nastier. Oh yeah, this is only a 30% damage bonus. My, on my main account, I rolled FP and I limit broke it, but I haven't used FP on this account yet. I should though. Boss Vault 4? Uh, the hardest boss there, I would, for most people, I would say is um, Limbo and God Juno. I'm not gonna lie, I don't normally struggle with any bosses. I struggle with the restrictions I place on myself. There's almost never a boss fight or a challenge quest if I was actually trying. You know, I was using everything at my disposal. I was using my friend support to summon like Merlin, Castoria, or Scatty, Waver, or, you know, something like that. Kualter. And I was using the, the strong stuff I have. I, it's really never been something I'd be like stuck on. Now I have absolutely though been stuck on things where uh, I'm trying to keep it budget. I'm trying to not, you know, do that kind of stuff. I'm trying to not whip out crazy OPCEs and things like that. Definitely had this stuff because of that kind of thing. Um, but I've been playing for so long, my account is powerful as fuck, right? So if I don't handicap myself, I can just blast everything. You know, I have a lot of the strongest supports, I, and I've got, even if they're not the best supports in the game, they're still super useful and can make things... Like, people are always saying Joan of Arc is so useless now, and I'm like, my god, if I could just slap Joan of Arc on my teams in my videos, it'd be so much fucking easier, right? Like, so often. But Raiko in uh, shooting, yeah, that, that that's definitely a hard fight, and I've, I have I have struggled on that fight on my ult accounts when we did it like first. Then that took some effort, very much so. But on my main, generally, it's it's pretty smooth sailing. But yeah, I've I've had problems on all kinds of bosses on ult accounts. Although even on my ult accounts, I still normally hold myself back. Um, the account I hold myself back on the least is the Herc account. But I still hold myself back. I, I still do not summon OP supports. You don't get supports in Shimosis, so that doesn't matter. But uh, I still focus a lot on budget because I just... Basically, the noob account, I just kind of play the game naturally. And that, I, I naturally will... Lean towards, you know, not cheesing things. There's not too much. You know, I like to have a mix of keeping the... I try to not trivialize the game. And I like to use servants that I like. You know, if I, if I can kind of mix that into what makes sense and what's reasonable. That's what I do. But yeah, Lost Belt 4. I would say God Juno with Limbo is definitely the uh, the hardest fight there. But a lot of things, like, I'm sitting here saying I, I, I don't really struggle with things unless I handicap myself. But that's because, one, I've been playing for a stupid long time, so I know the game inside and out. And I, I again, my account is ultra prepared. You know, I've got I've got great options in all areas, other than single target Casper. But well, actually no, I've got I've got Plot Monk. I think he's MP3 now, for God's sakes, to keep getting spooked by her. I don't use her in videos and stuff, but uh, technically, if I needed that, I would have it. 92% feels bad. We should win next turn though. 
A lot of accounts, you know, let's say they started playing the game and they're just going through the story, they're gonna get put out that content being a lot less prepared. Because for me, you know, I beat one story and have to wait months before the next story comes out. That blows the time to prep. They don't have that. So a lot of people get to you know, story fights and they have a really hard time. But my god, the struggle is so real a lot of times when I do handicap myself. Depends on the fight. But there are definitely been times where I have to really dig in deep. And sometimes what happens is it's just the only way that it's really reasonably doable by like low stars is either using a unit that I will not use, like Uriel, or it requires a lot of RNG. And then sometimes when that happens, I, I will use like uh, you know, a four star or, or, or summon a supporter or something to make a team around and make the video kind of about that. Yeah, Itemage and Jack is amazing for that fight because, um, one, buff removal is good there. They're both female. And then it's Ryder and Berserker. So Jack does unbelievably high damage to either one of them. And she has some survivability. That's, uh, seriously, Jack is phenomenal there. I don't even remember, what did I do for, I, I, I've, I have made so many videos for that fight. That is probably the most requested fight ever. So I just keep making videos for it because people just keep asking for it. I'm trying to remember what I did for the, I eventually did like a pure three star one. And we beat it with three star, um, I think we did. did. I can't, did we beat Shimosa with one to three stars? I can't fucking remember. Maybe we haven't done Shimosa yet. I don't know. If we have it, we should. Yeah, I'm sure Hunter Face was involved. Because that, that just makes sense. Assassin is the best class there. Assassin is just the best class there. What the fuck did the 1 to 3 star account do? See, I, I don't remember doing Shimosa on the 1 to 3 star account. Because, again, I, I, I know those bosses with 1 to 3 star units, but 3 star craft essences, like, must be fucking awful for some of those. I'm, I'm so sad I didn't have Va the VOD channel back then. Like, I, I really. Like that, those are, that is something I'd really want to go back and, like, okay, and be like, okay, what did I do for, like, there's like three fights there I, I would really want to see, and that's shooting in Raikou, the fucking assassin fight, because lol casters, um, and then I get, I, uh, Amakusa's not that hard, but I still want to see that one. Yeah, that was definitely before I started doing the VOD channel, so that sucks. Time to do it all again, I know, right? Give me a story replay, I'll just have to figure it out again. Yeah, surely 100 face was a big MVP for Raiko because I I know I have I have a video of doing all one to three stars uh, versus Raiko and shooting. I think 100 face is grailed, but it's irrelevant. It's it's obvious that it's irrelevant. And I've obviously done it with three star craft essences, but surely I had to make the team better. So I'm really curious what the fuck it was. Let me think off. I guess Bedivir, Bedivir in the front, 100 face in the back. Um. Maybe coup in there. I'm not sure. That's depends. I bet you I killed uh, Berserker first, though. That's why I say Bedivere. Great Berserker killer for like just go, 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 go. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Man, that sucks. I, I really want. I, I, we're gonna. If they have story replay, I'll get right on it. I want. I, I really want to do that fight again with three star craft essences because that's such a handicap. Because it, it hurts your ability to just nuke Raiko and just get her out of there, right? Billy makes sense. That makes sense. Did I have Billy though back then? That, uh, maybe I leveled him for that fight. That wouldn't surprise me. Because yeah, Billy and Bedivere are your two ways to just delete Raiko. And then you just have, you know, your best stuff for like Assassin. That makes sense. That makes sense. I can see that working. If that's what I did, I uh... I'm not a giant question mark. That I, I that's okay. We don't have a we don't have a fucking saber, so Lubu it is. Definitely better than Mori at soloing. Not even close. Mori has negative survivability. 
Or at least Lu Bu has his defense up. Oh right, that's right, it is that way. So you kill you kill Raiko last. That's right, I remember that in my video. I remember doing the music that it's like 100 face versus Raiko. I remember that now. So yeah, yeah, you murder shooting first. Right, right, right. So I made that other video a long time ago where I, I two turned shooting with Billy and and uh and Gintoki, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. She is because Gintoki instant MPs can break a health bar. Billy can instant MP break a health bar. Just boom, boom. I'm old and I'm tired. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna remember everything. What do you want from me here? 88k. Oh boy. This is actually kind of bad. Hate you guys. Maybe I should have been picking out the 88k one because he surely hits harder and I'm giving him more actions per turn and there's really no world where I'm going to NP here. Eh, we can BBB though. Alright, this if there's ever a turn to phase tank, it's this one because it's the last turn that I have the defense buff and I can probably kill the one... No, I should have killed that one to make stars so then like maybe crit the next one. But fuck it, let's see if we can do 88k. Three percent buster up. Close. Woo! Three of a kind bonus, man. This song is so good, man. It's one of my absolute favorite Armored Core songs. It's technically not an Armored Core song, but it is because it's made by in-house uh, sound people for Bumsoft, and they they made a lot of music like off. There's no armor core game for it to go along with because they haven't made one in a while. But they just made a album of just armored core style music, right? Yeah, frequency. They've, they've several times said they want to do more armored core. They were even hiring people with mecha, mecha experience and that kind of thing, but has not seemed to come. Uh, out yet, so I'm about to do a George solo. I guess we're fuck regular taunt walls. I normally save George in case you you know need uh we could do another berserker. We still have hysterios. Casters only get two actions per turn if there's only one of them left, so but uh Yeah we'll we'll do George. Okay, we are now running out of, of bronze units, I think. And then we still got a few. Whoa, no, 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 not that. That's a counter class. That'll, uh, that will not die. Chiron is such a fun unit, especially when you're fighting a, a Saber because he can be like a support but then still do pretty well against the Saber enemy, so it can be a really fun mix there. And he can just be selfish if you just want him to be the DPS, so. Okay, it's getting so hard to concentrate, it's hard to notice whose cards are in the wheel, so. We're getting to the end here. DPS scatty. Yeah, it doesn't work so good. I mean, you can do it, but uh, there's not much reason to. I was kind of just musing on Chiron in general. He doesn't get as much use as he deserves. Matahari animations. Yeah, imagine being one of the more popular one stars and uh, having that bad of animations this far into the game.
Going on six years, man. At this point, anyone that doesn't have an animation update from like the early servants just feels bad. Like it's been so long, and at this point, it's just like, good lord. Yep, I remember that uh, decently good. Well, they said they would try. They said they would try, which the they just such a did not put put make it a priority, right? So. Watch this overkill chat. We get overkill star gen. Oh man, George with the making two stars. Look out. I mean, they're all going to get animation updates. I don't I don't think DW is going to like undo what they said. They're wow, I didn't get my MP. Uh, I'm sure they're going to give every old unit an animation update. It's just going to take a lot longer than it should. Because you have events like this where they just don't update anybody, so. With how lukewarm the reception for this new servant has been, although, if, you know, I, I attract a pretty specific crowd, right? Uh, my crowd here is not representative of the FGO community at large at all. But even with that, I think the new character is a bit lukewarm. I don't think she's hated, but I don't, I don't think she's, like, super popular. Um, I feel like the player base actually would have been happier if we had gotten no new servant, but we had gotten like two really good animation updates, maybe even three. You know, let's go crazy here, right? Uh, I think people probably would have been happier with that because uh, you know, Galatia again, not hated, but not not super popular from what I've seen. I mean, Galatea is literally a statue. It's not, it's not even a statue based on a legend. It is a statue based on nothing. And then it got stories just based off the statue itself, right? So... Kind of a crazy thing that... Oh yeah, we got Ongra, boys. That's the one. Fuck up some berserkers, clearly. It was a very famous statue, though. I mean, I, I think it does qualify because, I mean, good, first off, in the Fate version, it was probably, the, you know, a robot, not just a, a statue. It was probably, um, you know, the mecha that we're seeing. But, I mean, my god, we have we have nursery rhyme. <laughs> right, like, we, we, ha we have the concept of, of disease and death, right? So a very famous statue is no stranger than... And all kinds of other nonsense. I mean, they've, they've always had conceptual, though, servants and things like that, so it's really not uh, anything mold breaking. <laughs> this is two ways, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Voyager. Voyager's a goddamn satellite. And in his case, he's not a satellite that was actually a person. He is just a satellite. He is a life form, you know, in a servant form, I guess. That is just like the personification of the fucking satellite. Where that may be, that may be the case too for for Galatea. I haven't, I don't, I don't know her lore yet. But it wouldn't surprise me that if in the the fate version of history that she was some kind of sentient robot statue thing or whatever. Um, but I don't know. Maybe she will have just been a statue and she's like the personification of the legends or whatever. So. Uh, I don't have any buffs, so might as well do that. No, it's not. No, the the mecha shit is not Lost Bolt specific. That's actually that's actually really old lore from like Fate Extra. It's mostly God specific. Um, but that's always been a thing. Honestly, they did not make that up for Lost Bolt. Now things change a lot in the Lost Bolts and get really out of hand and stuff. But uh, they they have always had it where like it's seriously they, they they said this a long time ago that the Olympian gods 
were, you know, like they, the, the Titans were aliens, they made the Olympian gods that are robots, and then they have like very humanoid, you know, avatars that they interact with humans with, and that those avatars are what got famous and got mingled with human history and stuff. That's always what their lore has been. Um, but that, it's, it's mostly specific to gods and the gods' creations that are robots. Most of the Greek hero, you know, Leonidas is not a robot, Achilles is not a robot, Hercules is not a robot, uh, Chiron is not a robot. You know, most of, like, the normal Greek heroes are just, you know, pretty, I mean, they're pretty straightforward, just anime Greek stuff, right? They don't get too crazy with them. One of the exceptions to that is Odysseus, because fuck Odysseus fans, apparently. Not allowed to have nice things. Makasari. Well, they, what they've done now, this is not how they did it like back in the day, but they, they kind of... Although the, the Greek gods have always had a mecha theme, that really did not spill into most of their Greek designs. It really just didn't, right? But ever since they kind of flushed out the Greek gods, they're kind of looking for opportunities to put, you know, more mecha stuff, even if it's not god-related. You know, they're almost like anything that's like construct-related. You know, the statue, mech. Uh, you know, a lot of the, like, uh, you know, golems and that kind of thing, mechs, right? So they're, and, you know, the Trojan horse, mech. Uh, so now that they've kind of established it, they're kind of just slapping mechs and anything Greek where they think it can kind of work. Which I don't really like, to be honest. I do think it works for Galatea just fine, or Galatea, whatever. Uh, I think that works pretty well there. But other than her, I don't, I don't really care for it. Especially the Trojan horse, that's just stupid. Like, how, how fucking dumb do the, uh... How fucking dumb do the Trojans have to be for the Trojan horse to work if the Trojan horse is a fucking mech, right? It is kind of, and also, it, the, really, the Trojan horse is just stupid because with all the other, like, normal Greek heroes, like the non-gods, the people on the battlefield are people like Chiron, obviously, I know he wasn't there, but you know what I'm saying. Like, the people on the battlefield are people like Pent, Hector, uh, you know, uh, Achilles, Leonidas, they look like that, right? They're just the typical Greek stuff. You know, a little anime, but not, not that crazy. But then, then a Trojan horse is a mech, right? Like, why, if, if that's normal, right, if they could just build a mech, uh, you know, why, why aren't, why is it Achilles' chariot a spaceship, right? It just doesn't make any fucking sense, so... Yeah, and Atalante is really normal and all that. You know, most of the Greek heroes are completely normal. I'm, I want to make it to stage 20 so hard, man, but I'm about to drop, dude. My, uh... Oh, boy! All right, um... Time to take, uh... Antoinette out here. She only got 95k. That's kind of disappointing. She has, a, she has a gimmick, but at 95k... I bet you though this I bet you this event is actually pretty fun if you're a pretty new account You probably have to really worry about the the cooldown gimmick And then you, you know when you get to this fight 90 you know, might be using something pretty suboptimal and again new account You know you're kind of weak the 95k is actually a lot And they're healing so you have to actually keep good value Double kill, I'll take it. I'm a little worried about my new computer because the fan is not running very much, I've noticed. Um, temperature right now looks fine. And, uh, but I, I was running OBS and everything, I would expect it, the fan to be running more than it is. But uh, we'll see, I have to take a peek at that later. One of the fans is running, but it's super quiet, and the other fan is kind of loud, and that one's not running much, so I need to look into which one's which. I mean, so this graphics card actually shows a display, like this motherboard will actually show a display for the temperature, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's not running hot, so... Okay, the bonus stage you can do whenever, so I'll probably just save that for next stream. We need to just get- I want to get to 20, that way, like, before I stream tomorrow, if I'm, like, you know, you know, eating breakfast or whatever, I can just, you know, get through a few filler stages. Um, because I'm, I'm not gonna do as many today as I should, because I'm so... exhausted. Cause, look, we still- we still have our meat of our units, man. We still got a lot of- a lot of units left here. Okay, this is a long shot. Let's see if, uh, let's see if Mori can 
can grab one for us. I'm, I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> he's such a bad solo unit, and we're not using good CEs, and he's 4-4-4, four, 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 and just... Yikes. William Tell fodder. Oof. I mean, there's no way to know because this... I'm this we're so early in this event. I haven't seen shit. The first, you know, 50 floors are normally nothing. The Labyrinth event is very much scaled around, though, you not having a full team. Um, but so are these events, too, for the most part. Maybe other than the bosses, but... Uh... It, it, they're kind of uncomparable though because you can you can literally use the same three servants over and over again in the labyrinth event Which I'm sure plenty of people do that where you can't do that over here. So it's pretty different oh. uh, Really the labyrinth event is piss easy until the final bosses and stuff. Town quest and the final boss final, like, maybe the flash two main bosses or so are pretty good um, So it, it's very backloaded I tell you, I don't really like the maze event mainly because it's just how did they design an event like that? It's so dumb. It's so boring. It's like you click after click after click where you're not even doing anything. It's just nothing stages, and it's not even a maze. It is so linear. It doesn't matter what order you go down the hallways in. It literally doesn't matter. So it's a totally linear event with such some. It's just filler, such filler. Um, and with that that much clicking, like waiting around, it's just like why? I just do not understand it. But uh, I do really like the boss fights at the end. The challenge quest is really good. The, the fight with Kama is really good, right? So, uh, although the overall event, I'm like, eh, the bosses are pretty great. I wonder if I do my attack, but you know what? Let's do this. The defense down won't matter if I've got... Uh, Evade. Yeah, I, I agree. They didn't really. The thing is, they can have maps just open up though, and not have you need to click on anything, right? I think it was like their way of trying to make it feel like you were exploring. But yeah, I don't think the game is set up in a way that they weren't really ready to do something like that. I mean, it's the Unity engine, so you can do a lot with it. But the framework for F Go clearly is. Uh... Well, we didn't kill that guy. That's worrying because now I'm gonna have a million defense downs and uh, I think this guy only gets one action per turn though He might get two. I don't remember Nope, just one Even if he crit we would have uh, been safe I tell you Mori and Lancelot They just did not shine in solos you know, again, a lot of value transfers between solo and, and team play is the DPS. It's survivability good in both, and it's good in both. But star absorbs stuff? Mm-mm, not at all. Yeah, Kane isn't good for that challenge quest, but uh, her class isn't. That's why it was so impressive to me. That's why I made it a video. An AoE Lancer is not the ideal class for that... that that challenge quest. A lot of people really missed that, like that's why I made that the video, because Kane has performed quite well there, but that, that that circumstance really was not a situation where you're like, oh yeah, this is the time to bring an AoE Lancer. That is not the time to bring an AoE Lancer. That's like the time to bring an AoE Avenger, AoE Berserker, like, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it was kind of, uh, you know, her punching up a little bit. And uh, however, what made her good there was regardless of her class, having a mixture of single target and AoE on a single unit was quite nice there, because some of the enemies had, you know, would get down to a really high health, so then you, you needed single target punch. So, you know, her, her toolkit was awesome for it, even though her class was, her class wasn't like bad for it, but her class was not exceptional for it. It wasn't, uh, there definitely are easier units to use, but um, she still did well, so I enjoyed it a lot. I, I really liked that setup, it was fun. Good, good times. Uh, we are definitely running out of gas here for, uh, class-specific stuff. We still have some of our best stuff, though. We still have Babbage and Koo, Uma. But a after that, though, then we're... 
bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Yeah, Canis is an ST Lancer with AoE as a bonus. That is pretty accurate. It's not, however, accurate, though, for certain things, right? Like, there are just certain style of setup where you need MP damage, right? Because you need a huge amount of burst damage, and there's no way to make stars yet, and things like that. You can't maybe work in Mozart or whatever. And so you need to turn one, do big damage. And unless you've got, like, very specific Star Bomb Servants or CEs or stuff like that, you can't always do that. And then also, you might not have the cards. You might need to break the enemy health bar in turn one. And you can make stars, but oh no, Canis didn't get cards. Um, right? And so the, the one... You know, NPs are the one way to guarantee turn one break something. And so if that's the style of thing you need, she's not good for it. Now, in the long run, you know, if it's okay, it's like, oh, it doesn't matter if you get damage on this turn or that turn. Or, or then or there, right? It's not super specific when you need it, but you just need it eventually. Then her single target damage is fine, right? And it keeps up pretty well. Not, not the best in the game by any means, but it's, it's totally serviceable. And then you do get AoE as a bonus and big damage cut and blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've tested Canis quite a bit. Certainly a good unit. Not the best unit in the game by any means, but she is a good unit. Uh, and she can get some surprisingly high amount of value out of her skills. Uh, but yeah, she's no, she's no Enkidu or anything. Um, she's not she's not on par, she's not on par with the best single target lancers and she's not on par with the best AOE lancers but she's a kind of a fun hybrid and that can be good sometimes uh, if she does get a buff though I could see some pretty major potential there if they give her a good one I don't think she needs one I think for I think for a four star she's pretty good I suspect though they actually want her to be a four star that goes beyond a four star because even talk about like how her lore and everything is just insane and you know it's kind of weird that she's a four star like in an interview they pretty much was like are you really a four star, right? Like, uh, like he said. So I wouldn't be surprised if they they want her to be one of the, like kind of like Hercules and stuff. She's not. She's not like Hercules, obviously. But it wouldn't surprise me if they want her to be a four star. That's you know pushing the boundaries. And so if you know if they buff her, they might decide to do something crazy. Alright, basically get NP win game here. We didn't even need the damage CE. Like the way the damage thresholds are going to work, I'm going to kill everything on the same turn. Like starting NP would have been better. Because the NP is going to kill the 94 Kai. No, 90... No, I'm going to kill Kai. I'm going to kill my friend with Robin's NP. There, there's the sleep deprivation for you. Anyway, um, we're going to kill that 94k... Uh, crab with the NP no matter what. You know, any damage we do to him before or after is irrelevant. And then we'll probably same thing for the 34k. We'll one turn with normal card damage, I think, with that, with, even if I didn't have it. So, I like, I can use the fucking attack up here. I don't, I don't, I don't need to use it on the NP, and I wouldn't even if I didn't have the damage to use. So yeah, the only difference would have been I could have gotten my NP a lot faster. But yeah, we definitely overkilled by 30% there. Yeah, I, I, enough people think that she's kind of bad. Uh, like I said, I think you could argue that she's average, but people don't argue that she's average. People argue that she's bad, um, which I don't think is accurate. But anyway, uh, enough people think that, that I do think she's probably going to get up at some point. Also, she's owed an interlude. They give everyone at least one interlude eventually. It can take a while, but they always give everyone at least one interlude, so she'll probably get... She might get buffed with that, and that's, you know, pretty 50-50 if you do or don't. So, Kath uh, got the 5-star in this banner in, like, two 10 rolls, and he was just kind of throwing out whatever. And then Saber Nero, who's a regular here, he he just for sure, he didn't even know who it was yet. He, he doesn't really keep up with the FGO news and stuff, uh, which, because he's sane, he's a sane person. Um, he, he literally was like, I'll throw 30 SQ at it. And he got two copies of her, which is so stupid to me because I've been playing this game for a very long time and I have a lot of accounts. Now, to counter what I'm about to say, I also haven't used a lot of the SQ that I, I've accumulated, right? I haven't rolled in a while, so I'm sitting on a lot of SQ right now. But still, I've been playing for a long time 
And so throughout, you know, I've rolled a lot, uh, ultimately, through all my accounts and just the time, right? Uh, I don't wail, but, you know, that much free-to-play for that long is still a lot of rolls. And I have never gotten two five-stars in a 10-roll, except for a GSSR, which doesn't really count. Uh, unless I'm forgetting a time, I've never gotten two five-stars. Uh, I have gotten two five-stars in back-to-back 10-rolls, -back but never two in the same 10-roll off memory. Uh, but yeah, he just 30 SQ and bam, two, uh, two five stars, both the rate up just right there. It just never happened to me at any point. So, Because uh, if it has happened, it certainly was a spook. I don't think I've had like double rate up. Uh, it's bound to happen someday if I keep playing, you know, I mean, like big sample size in the long run, so it'll probably happen at some point. But I have gotten double SSRs in GSSR. That, that's happened twice at least. It's happened twice. Might have happened th three times. I got double Mordred in GSSR once, and then I got a Skandar and Achilles in a GSSR. It was a wider GSSR. And then I, that, those are the two that I remember. I know they happened. And there may be some other time. You know, I got, I've, you know, sometimes I roll like the ult account on GSSR and an A, where I don't really give a fuck. It wouldn't shock me if one of those got double and I just uh, didn't remember. Alright, three more stages. What is the boss wave? We're gonna have to actually be careful here. We are low on units, so we ideally would want an assassin. There's some other class there though, but I don't know what it is. That actually sucks, not knowing what that is. So Fuma could be good. What's it like? I'm, I'm worried that other class is gonna mess it up. I, if I can, I would like to say Fuma and Ku. Because if it's something fucked, Ku's a good way to go. And so I'll try to win with Leonidas here. If I can save Fuma and Ku, I think we can handle what's what's left. Uh, no matter what here. Very low on uh, fodders. Although I can, it's okay, but I can start using supports as fodders. I mean, hell, I could use supports, I guess, for the final stage, because what else am I going to use them for at that point? Like, yeah, I really I could just start bringing supports. I don't see the need to bring uh, gold units. I think we'll be fine without doing that. Leo buff though. I, th I think Leo deserves a buff. He doesn't really need it. He's a great low star. He is niche, but God, his niche is so strong. Um, there's been some just multiple super hard boss fights that he's amazing for. Like he's good for king potato chips for God's sakes. Um, but just for the fun of it and just for how awesome he is, I'd love for Leo to get a buff. I, I said this before. This is a mouthful to explain, but I w this is the buff I want for him. It's not going to happen because it would require them to like make new assets, and they're just not going to do that. I want them to buff his NP, and then I want them to add an effect like Angra's effect, where it goes off the turn after, right? It's like, it's not part of the NP animation, it's like a thing that activates the next turn, and it's the spear throw. Because that's, that's, how, that's how his NP works lore-wise, where he has like a counter attack after doing his NP, and like the more vitality he has left, the stronger the, the counter attack is. Um, so you make it the opposite of Angra, right? And you don't make it super strong, and you probably don't make it flat damage either. You probably make it a, 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 an attack multiplier, like a normal NP, uh, and it just goes off. But you make it so, like, if he's not Grailed, it maybe averages, like, 30k damage, you know, at, at a counter class, right? And, and, you know, maybe if he's Grailed, you know, a chunk, it does not need to be, like, loads of damage. You know, maybe a little more than that. Maybe 30k is a bit disappointing. But Leonidas isn't supposed to be doing damage with his NP anyway. He's not designed for that, and he doesn't need to be doing it. Uh, but so, like an extra, you know, bop, a little extra oomph, you know, to help your team out, uh, or in a solo, I, that makes complete sense lore-wise. It would definitely make him a better unit, but I don't think it would break him either. I don't think he's gonna be some broken-ass unit if he can throw out, you know, you know, 30-ish to, you know, 50-ish K damage, you know, on, on a delay, right, and it doesn't scale very well, or maybe doesn't scale at all, right, you know, like, that's fine. I don't think that's a problem. Um, I, I, it's just so good lore-wise, and it, it would be so cool. And I don't want the spear throw to be his extra attack, and I think it will be, but that sucks because it's uh, it, I don't want him doing it constantly, right? It's something you want to see, you know, rarely because that's how it's supposed to work. Although I guess he actually uses his MP a lot, so I guess you'll see it about the same either way. But anyway, um, yeah, that literally the counter attack thing is actually part of his MP. It's something they forgot about. They they basically represent it with the stars. The crit stars are supposed to represent his counter attack aspect. But I don't think it does a very good job of that, so uh, I would that that's the buff I want for Leonidas because it'd be it'd make him better. You could also kind of do some gimmicky stuff to make him a DPS, and then it'd be very cool and it's lore accurate. So that that's a pretty awesome buff. 
uh, in my opinion. But yeah, that, I can almost guarantee you that's not going to happen because that would that's they that's uh, adding a whole new aspect to them like that, like adding a new thing, like adding in the Angra style MP effect. They're not going. There's no fucking way they're going to do that. Like they might do that for a new unit. They might make a new unit that's kind of like that. But there's there's no way for off a of buff. They're pretty lazy with how they like update. Blow stars all the time when it comes to animation updates and stuff. Not always, like Ushi was, was good. But yeah, I don't, I don't see them putting in that kind of work. Not just in gameplay, but like that kind of work in thinking, right? They're not gonna want to think about it that much. I just put more thought into like Leonidas gameplay versus lore than I think they're ever going to, so. I mean, maybe not, who knows? I, I know like Nasu and them care about that kind of stuff, but DW I don't think uh, always does. But... The anime did though, the anime actually did a, a really excellent job. The anime almost did too good of a job, and they did some. The anime did some like references that are almost too on, uh, like too gamey. But okay, so the anime for Babylonia, they actually really, they, they know that Leonidas has the counterattack part on his MP. They, they did it right, and not only that, when he throws the goddamn spear for like one or two frames, the the screen like flashes when like it goes from like the spear just being a spear, and then when it catches fire, and during that moment. There's like a, you see like the, the explosion on the screen is like made an explosion that looks like a crit star. Uh, and, and that's because the counterattack in FGO is represented by the crit stars, right? Uh, so it's like, I mean, they, they, they got Leonidas like right on the money in terms of how he works lore-wise and just then like referencing the game in, in a way that is actually makes sense. And like, that's almost too good though. But at this point, I swear, they remember that the crit stars mean the, the counterattack, but I don't know if DW remembers that anymore. The only thing I wish they had done differently as I wish they had drawn his soldiers instead of CGI-ing them, but I, I get that's a lot of dudes, but uh, still, it would've been a lot more awesome if they could've done that. At least they didn't make his soldiers look like Romans. It was dumb enough that the anime put the Romans, you know, in like, as the Babylonian foot soldiers, but uh, I, I, I would've lost my shit if his NT spawned Roman soldiers. Uh, that would've, that, I could not have handled that. Because they you know in the game when you fight him in a challenge quest and he represents his NP through like the extra soldiers, the hundred soldiers, they use the Romans because you know lazy. I like how Leonidas is getting blasted here. Yeah, like nothing done here with uh, Leonidas. It's like the we barely done any damage. We're on turn four and look, the enemies. Oh, I must have killed one. Surely there was three. Surely it's not going that bad. Yeah, the immersion, yeah. Okay. Let's bump some dudes here. Gotta get my MP, then bust the chain. There's really no reason to bust her up like I did there, but it's, hopefully it's not gonna matter. This should be about to end. I have a lot of debuffs, though. Well, they did not really make enough stars, but maybe something will happen. That's where command codes would be helpful. You put the star bomb on the quick cards and the star absorber in the buster. Pretty likely to get a buster chain of crits here. But yeah, you do the reverse of Angra, so like that damage, the counterattack that- oh shit. That counterattack that would happen next turn, uh, would, the more health Leonidas has, the more damage it does. And again, at max, it should only do like 30k. Uh, or something like that, somewhere in there. Uh, and then obviously if you take a lot of damage, but that, that's, how, that's how he works lore-wise. The more vitality he has, the better. And Leonidas, you know, you want to stack defense buff sometimes to take zero damage and that kind of thing. So, and you might use mash with him and put healing on him. He's not, necess he's not necessarily like George, where you just, you know, let him die in three turns. Although sometimes you don't use George that way either, but it's pretty common that you don't use Leonidas that way, so... Attack buff would be too good, unfortunately. Uh, I don't think you, you could give him an attack buff on his MP because you can set him up where he can MP spam. And I, I, maybe if you did it for one turn, but it, it'd be it'd be rough. It, 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 that, if you gave him a really good attack buff with him MP spamming, he'd just get out of control. Although it would be hilarious, so. And I mean, we got you got Ushi and Ku over there. That apparently, they think that's balanced. So if uh, if Asclepius, Hans, Ushi, Ku, and David are allowed to exist, 
I guess it's fine if, if Leonidas becomes a staple low star that's just shredding shit because, I mean, that's what the others are, so... Fuck it. Alright, I'm gonna bring other supports because we're on the last two stages, so I'll just bring actual stuff here. Save Mozart though in case we need it. There is no star bomb for one to three star. How unfortunate. This song is so good, it's like criminal, man. Bravely default. There is so much good music from that soundtrack. I really need to get off my ass and add more of it to the playlist. I can make a whole playlist of that game soundtrack. Some people think eventually they're gonna buff Ku again. Some people think he's gonna get one more. Kind of like how Emiya's been buffed to shit. Because Emiya's super popular and everything. Ku's also super popular. He's crazy fucking popular. He's gotten more popular as time has gone on. Um, so some people think they're gonna like, oh yeah, just upgrade all of his skills so none of them are vanilla anymore. So some people think they're gonna buff his third skill. I would be okay with that as long as they buff all the other fucking Lancers and they just make it, because, you know, it's true, if there's no debuffs, you don't really need his third skill. But they, uh, God, don't make it some crazy impactful thing. Make it something kind of tame and then, uh, but yeah, for God's sakes, buff the other Lancers. We need it so much more. Yeah, Medea, oh my God, Medea. How, how can she not get a buff, man? What a mess. This might look weird, but it's like... I should not have used the, the, the MP charge there. Oh, I should have done that, but uh... You know what, let's see if uh... Also, what happens with the goddamn uh... Steam sounds, dude! I should have given Shakespeare the Ryoto Temple CD instead of... Gong. I didn't think I was gonna do what I just did though. Almost all of Babbage's cards are in the last hand. That's how it goes sometimes. You know what? I'm gonna overkill that MP game. Bap bap. Kind of an unnecessary uh Um, I don't need to do the Brave Chain at all, <laughs> like, I didn't really need the attack up then, but, uh, I'm doing it because I want the MP gain, but yeah, I should, probably should've just done, like, an Art Chain there or something. I mean, good lord, look, look how much overkill we just did. Really suboptimal combo for damage. So let's see if it's uh, the right mix for. I oh, probably could have done an arcane again. It's fine. What about Kyo? What? So much damage here. You know, I did all that work for Shakespeare. I did all that work for Shakespeare. He could NP and he has Buster up, but bad bitch. Her buff is sad, her buff is sad. I, I, uh, uh. Too bad we don't have our attack up anymore, I don't think. Or did we? I think we, maybe we did, actually. Yeah, we did. The bonkage. By the way, mecha music playing for Babbage. Gundam music right here. I need to get his skill ranks up. This account's gonna need him. Okay. What's the other class here? Oh 
Oh, yeah, no problem, man. I try to raid people, uh, help people out, you know. It's always good for the, you know, the EFCO community to... Because, man, Twitch, God. Fuck, dude, please tell me this whole event's not gonna be like this. I'm gonna hate this event if the whole event is like this. If every tin floor, I, I'm literally gonna rate this as, like, the worst, like, dude. The whole thing that's fun about Setsu Bun... The whole thing that's fun about Setsu Bun and, uh... CEO event is every ten floors you have a boss fight that is kind of fun to solo. First 50 floors like this? Have, have we confirmed that after the first 50 it stops being like this? Because the tenth floor is the good one! Dude, this- I don't- I don't like this at all! It's not only is it boring, but it's super easy because I was all, like, saving my best units for this. I literally saved... Like my best stuff for the, this 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 stage to make sure I'd be able to beat it right on on this piece of crap account. Uh, and, and, and but I I you get you know it doesn't matter if you have units because you get NPC units. It stops after fifty. Oh thank God. The first fifty floors are always a joke anyway. I guess they just want like every baby account ever to be able to beat the first fifty floors so they get some rewards and free stuff out of it, which I guess you know fine, but. It is boring. That is very boring. God. What did I even save Koo for then? Shit, I had Koo and Fuma and Mozart and all the, like... I, I guess we bl blew uh, Uchi, but, uh, you know. These events shouldn't really be for baby accounts, though, anyway. It's like... But I guess, you know, if it is only the first 50 floors, I don't mind too much. And it is nice. If you can beat the first 50 floors as, like, a brand new account, that's, like, enough loot that you're like, okay, you know, that's, that's pretty good, right? You're not, you're, hopefully you don't cry. I mean, you probably will cry, but... I'm not, I'm not as mad now, but I, I was worried every 10th floor was going to be, like, a preset thing like this. And, you know, if they made them super hard and you had to use the preset way thing in a really clever way... Then that'd be pretty cool, but they normally aren't like that. They are occasionally, but pretty rarely. Uh, I think we just... This is such an awkward team. <laughs> this is such an awkward team. We have an art DPS with a Buster Quick Support and then a Ruler that's like a tank, so... I don't really know what to say about this. Just build NP game. <laughs> Yeah, it's because she's from CCC and computers. To be fair, though, I don't know why people get so uppity about the Moon Cancer class. It's not a real class. It's made by the Moon Cell, right? And it's not like BB is the only thing that gets access to the Moon Cell. She o normally she doesn't. That's the thing. BB in almost every timeline ever is a completely nothing AI program that never amounts to anything. I think she's a fucking medical... She was originally like a medical AI program. And in almost every timeline ever, she does not get access to the Moon Cell's abilities and she doesn't do anything. Right? And through a lot of different timelines and bullshit, a lot of different people get access to, to, to Moon Cell shenanigans. And then sometimes no one does. So it, it's not even a real class. And it's not, it's not unique to BB to be able... It's not like there's something about BB that allows her, you know, any more access to the Moon Cell than literally anyone else. It's just that the plot tries to contrive in that direction now because people expect that. Look at that double defense up. Thanks forever. I like how all my goddamn NP gain for uh, Tomoe is in the final hand. She has literally had no NP gain cards in the first two hands. These are the only three enemies, so I guess spread the damage out just because. Yeah, technically we are breaking the rules of this account, but I can't help it because it's a, it's the forced units. So uh, it would be funny if someone opened the stream right now, reads the title, it plays in A, doesn't play this event, and they're like, "What the fuck?" Although you can see support, support, support on the screen, so you should. Anyone that knows it, like if I if I joined a stream and they had the same title I do and I saw a bunch of mismatched stuff, and they were playing an event I haven't played before, I would obviously check. I played- I- I- I played the game. I know four supports are a thing. So if I see someone breaking the rules before I would even think to say anything, 
I would be like, oh yeah, are these supports? Is this story stuff? I, I, that's the first thing that come to mind. Okay, now Tomoe can get like all of the things. I, mean, I'm, I, I don't care about the crits like I normally would, so I'm using for NP gain. So. Let's see if you can do it here. Oh. Uh, I, I love her like trying to act serious in stage one. Statue. Okay, they're all dead, I hope. I don't know, that 100k one might live actually. We're not counterclassing or anything. And I don't even know what MP rank she is. Although I think they have event CEs equipped, so. Nope, two lives, damn. 9k! Well... We looped, though. As she do. Completely unnecessary NP right here. I wish the CGI in this game was better. Like, if they're gonna use 3D models, I wish they would do a better spot for it. They generally don't. Old game engine though. And I just don't think they have it optimized for that kind of thing. Okay, chat. I cannot go any farther. I am so tired. Uh, I am pooped. Hopefully I can get some good sleep tomorrow though. And uh, I'll be all set. Oh, is Cairo streaming? Yeah, I'll absolutely raid him. Uh, I bet you he's playing this event too. Hopefully he gets farther than I did. I'm just, I'm too tired, man. But, uh, what I'll probably do tomorrow when I'm, like, doing laundry and, cause I, I gotta, I gotta do laundry spoilers. Uh, you know, and breakfast and all that stuff. I'll probably play a few stages on this account off stream just to get through, you know, just a, a little bit. Um, so the cooldown isn't, like, whipping. But I won't beat any bosses. I'll just do, like, a couple. But yeah, I hope to see you all then. Maybe we work on some Darkest Dungeon. We might have a hard time playing bonus games this week just because of this event. And I got a lot of accounts and, and everything. But uh, I love Darkest Dungeon and I cannot wait to play it more. But hopefully, I'm, I want to get... I want to make some fucking videos, man. I want to... I'm so pissed that all these boss fights are not video worthy early on because I, I have not made an Epco video in a while and I've been itching for it. I got my new computer. I want to test it out. See if I got my settings all right. You know, trial by fire. But uh, I'm so exhausted and everything, so I don't think I'll be able to do it for a few days. Uh, not good for the YouTube algorithm, by the way, but... Uh, oh well. Okay, let's find our boy Cairo here. He is indeed streaming. And he is indeed playing the event. Also. Alright, there we go. Thank you all so much for hanging out and listening to a delirious, mad old man ranting about nothing. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.